Welcome to TT Boy TV. We have a, a guest today that was very important to me, especially in the building of my company, Evasive Angles. And I'm, he's a friend of mine, and I'm happy to have him here. I haven't seen him in a long time. So everybody, please welcome Mark Anthony. Hey, <laughs> I'm happy to be here. It's good to see you again. We had a lot of fun together back in the day. <laughs> we did a lot together. Right. A lot, worldwide. So we have so much to go over. You okay. know, it's been a long time. We haven't seen each other in almost 10 years. Right. Right, so anyways, first off, you said you weren't feeling good and you had some health problems. Yeah. So what happened? Oh, man, that's a, <laughs> a long story. Um, <clears throat> well, I had... Um, like an issue with my heart, you know. Um, they had to uh, do surgery, so they had to go in and put a stent in, you know. Um, like for a year, I was like in and out of the hospital, just one issue after the other. Uh, but you know, I'm feeling a lot better now. But yeah, it was it's kind of rough. So you, know? you had a heart attack or something? I'm not exactly sure if it was a full on heart attack, but like. Like I was having chest pains. It felt like somebody reached into my chest and was just squeezing my heart. And so, um, you know, they got me on so many medications right now. Too, right now? But yeah. yeah. But I mean, I feel better though. You know what I mean? You look good. I feel good. good, yeah. You look good. You, I mean, you, physically, you feel better? Yeah. You know what I mean? Healthier? I don't know what yeah. you looked like six years ago or four years ago when you were yeah. sick. You were gaining weight or what? Um. Yeah, I was gaining weight. Um, uh, I definitely feel way better than I did like six years ago when yeah. it first started. When That's I first what happened. Having issues, yeah. Uh -huh. But um, first of all, some people might not know who you are because this is an audience that goes worldwide. Right. But let's let everybody know who you are, what you okay. did. So I was a, um, a porn actor for like twenty years. But then also I started uh, producing and directing videos. I directed like quite a few vid videos for Evasive Angles. And um, yeah, that's pretty much it. Producer, director, porn star. Right. right. And I have to let everybody know that he's a very good producer. Thank you. Okay. The, the girls loved him because mostly we want to make sure the girls show up. And Mark had a great rapport with them. Right. And he could get girls to show up. Any time, almost really, you know. And I think that probably the best producer that I had. Right, right. Yeah, yeah. I mean, there was a lot of girls that wouldn't show up, even they're gonna make money. It was hard <laughs> to get them to show up, but I was able to get quite a few of them to show up when they didn't show up for other directors or producers. That's right. And uh, Evasive Angles appreciate it. Right. So did I. Right. All right. Anyways, we have a long story to go over. I just want to let people know who he is in case you don't know. Right. Okay. So let's go all the way to the beginning because I want to know some things. I do know some things. Okay. You know, you disclosed some things with me before, but let's go all the way back. Where were you born? Uh, Pensacola, Florida. Pensacola, Florida. And you were born in what year? 1970. 1970. So you're 53 now? And so, what kind of childhood did you have? Um, I mean, it was okay. Like uh, originally, um, we were living in the um, in the uh, projects, government housing. Um, but, what what project? People might you know uh, shout out. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Morris Court. Uh -huh. Yeah, and so, but eventually, you know, my mom she got a better job, and so we moved out of the uh, the projects and moved into like the suburbs, which uh, to me, I think that was a, a good thing for me because in the projects, I was starting to get into a lot of trouble. Right. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and so we moved to the uh, suburbs and then, you know, I didn't get in as much trouble with them. What about your father? My father passed away when I was five years old. So he was living with you in the projects or no? Yeah. 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 I mean, he told me he had a heart attack or something. Yeah. Were you a good student after you got out of the projects? Um, you know, elementary, I was. I was just 
not, it was kind of hit or miss. But um, once I got into middle school, uh, I started doing better in school. And then when I got into high school, I you know made the honor roll in high school. No shit. A couple of well, times. Yeah. So that's straight A's? Yep. That was cool. Yeah. Did you get in the fights at school? When I uh, was in elementary school, I got into a lot of fights. Really? Yeah. In the projects or no? Yeah. <laughs> and uh, and then middle school, not so much. Maybe once or twice. And then high school, only got into one fight. But like elementary, almost every other day. Really? <laughs> so that's a lot of fights. That's come on, that's a lot of fights, Mark. A couple hundred fights? Uh, I wouldn't say a couple hundred. Could have been a hundred. <laughs> yeah. It, it, really? Because people are fighting a lot in that area? Yeah. That's a lot of fights. I mean, for, you know. Well, you know, um, I had a temper. <laughs> when I was little, I had a temper. So at the drop of a hat, oh. I'm ready to fight. <laughs> oh, really? <laughs> you're pissed off? What for? Because you're the way you're living or something? I don't know. No? I know. <laughs> People know Mark. He's very, very quiet. Right. Very quiet. And you would never know that. Right. Don't you think? Well, well I, I worked on it, you know. Yeah. Okay. I, I started trying to figure out ways to calm myself down and um, not be so angry. Really? <laughs> yeah. Huh? Huh. I didn't know that. But I know there was one thing that you told me, that you went to school with Roy Jones. Yep. Who was, happens to be one of my favorite fighters of all time right. but tell me about you said i think you told me one time that you saw him fight or he's go, gonna go to a street fight after school or something like that right um <clears throat> this uh he got into this is in middle school he got into it with this other guy and the other guy was like okay after school then right so roy's like okay and so after school uh roy um they was gonna fight right and so, but the other guy pulled out a knife. <laughs> <laughs> really? <laughs> oh, shit. And uh, he actually cut Roy. He did? Yeah, and the police uh, arrested that guy. <laughs> he took him to juvenile. <laughs> <laughs> no shit? Yep. <laughs> did Roy hit light him up or no? Um, No, he was about to, though. But I think that's why the dude got scared and pulled out the knife. <laughs> <laughs> He's like, I'm not going to fight with this boxer. I'm going to just cut him. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but Roy's so fast. That, you know, Maybe not that fast you know, at that younger age, but he was so fast. I know he could get through a knife. You know what I mean? Right. right. If, I guess if you know what you're doing. But, you know, you're a kid, right? That's grammar's you know, middle, uh, school? middle school. Yeah. Right. Did you go to high school with him, too? Yeah. Yeah? yeah. So you knew him? Mm -hmm. You talked yeah. to him? Yeah, he... Um, um, he found out that I was doing porn, so he didn't have my number, but he had my best friend's number. And he called my friend, was like, uh, "Hey man, I didn't know uh, Glad because my last name is Gladney, so but they used to call me Gladney." It's like, "Hey man, why you didn't tell me Gladney doing them flicks?" <laughs> <laughs> He's a porn fan. Yeah, yeah, Roy. You know, you know what? I went to a, si a signing where I saw all the boxers, and um, I said, "Hey Roy, man, I think you were the, the best middleweight I ever saw when you're prime." Right, you know, right. and he said, "Yeah, thanks, man." And he looked at me funny, right? right. <laughs> <laughs> so I know he probably said, who is that motherfucker, right? He probably recognized you. Oh, come on, man. Fuck, you know what I mean? <laughs> Anyways, so Roy was cool. Yeah. Uh, yeah, he was real cool. Nice guy. So you knew him pretty pretty well? Yeah. Yeah, cool. Was well, we, he li we lived in the same neighborhood. Yeah. No, yeah, the same yeah. block or something, whatever? Yeah. Oh, that's cool. I mean, he was coming up. But I, mean, I was just a big fan, you know? So I'm just, right. yeah, I want to know. Anyways. Let's move on. Okay. <laughs> That's about right. Mark Anthony right now. <laughs> okay. All right. So, um, did you go to church? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yep. Almost every Sunday. Really? <laughs> yeah. Well, what uh, religion was that? Uh, Baptist. Baptist. Southern Baptist. Southern Baptist. All right. Yeah. How how was that? Did it um repress you at all, or make you more horny? Because sometimes repression will kind of fuck with your mind. Um. Not really. I mean. I didn't really think about it, you know? I didn't really think about it. I mean, hmm. I was a kid, and my mother took us to church every Sunday, so I just went, you know? But I didn't really, like, I don't know if I took it serious or not, you know? Yeah, I just, uh, see, yeah, I mean, just whatever, just going to church. Yeah. Okay. So when did you stop going to church? Um, I still go to church now. Really? Yeah. Huh? So, uh, okay. I used to go to church, too. Right. <laughs> anyway. Catholic Church. 
I went to both. Oh, okay. Christian and Catholic, but okay. mostly Catholic. But my great great grandfather started the Bethel Seminary in Stockholm, Sweden. Oh, okay. He was a general in the Civil War too. He went okay. back to Stockholm, but um, <clears throat> he was, you know, he um had seen the original scrolls. You know, anyways, he's you know the holy man in Stockholm, and you know the king. Everybody went to see him when he died. Anyways, you know he was a holy man for fifty years in Stockholm, Sweden. Okay. As a matter of fact, they still got a um uh scholarship named after him in uh, Nebraska. Oh, okay. It's called the um, the Knut Oscar Brody Scholarship at the college. Anyways, so so um, let's talk about girls, right? <laughs> right. When did you first, you know, start looking at the girls? How old were you? Hmm, that's a good question. Um, maybe seven, eight. Yeah, you st- yeah. what'd you notice about them? <laughs> uh that they were pretty, and then, um, <laughs> you know, I was uh, attracted to the older women, especially if they had, like, big breasts. Oh, yeah? <laughs> yeah. So not really an a ass, you're looking for the titties. Yeah. yeah. So did any girls, older girls say, hey, Anthony, you're pretty cute. Come over to my house. <laughs> like, Shawn Michaels had that happen to him. Really? Yeah, how about you? Um, I, I did have an incident um, with uh, my... Well, she was my babysitter slash piano teacher. I think she was like 25 years old. Yeah. We used to play around. Really? Yeah. Fuck her? You know what? I was so young. I didn't know what I was doing. I don't know if it went in or not. Wow, I really? don't know. Like, how old? How old was I? Maybe 10. And she was 25. <laughs> All right. I mean, you know, sounds good to me, you know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> I, you know, I had similar situation. Not, I think I had 12, not 11, yeah. Anyways, it's all good for me because right. we, we're men and we like girls. Right. Right? So that's cool, though. So they get you, so you notice the older women first. Yeah. And you like them first. Yeah. Right? So do you remember your first crush? And did you get any action off her? Uh, yeah, I remember my first crush. Um... Didn't really get any action. She was my um, uh, first grade teacher. No. Yeah. Mm. She was beautiful. <laughs> really? Yeah. So that means you were like six. Yeah. So you had a crush? Yeah. What'd she look like compared um, to an actress or something? She was um, she was white. She had really long hair. She kind of had a hippie type look, you know? And uh, what I would do, I would try to go and talk to her and just, you know, but play innocent, but still try to touch her. Really? <laughs> yeah. Wow. So I don't know if she noticed or not, but she never said anything. <laughs> wow. That's pretty quick at that age. You got some balls already, huh? <laughs> How old were you the first time you got some pussy? Um, you know what? That's a good question. Um, When I was younger, eight, nine, ten, whatever, I played around with, like the one older woman, but then also girls around my age. And I played around, but I didn't really know what I was doing, you know? So I would say maybe I started playing around like seven or eight, but I didn't really know what I was doing until I was like 15 when I actually, you know, That's knew you... that I was having sex. Like before, I don't even know if it went in. <laughs> oh, but for sure yeah, at 15. Yeah. Was your girlfriend or just some girl? Yeah, girlfriend. Yeah. What she look like? Uh, black girl, really cute, um, nice butt, nice titties too. Yeah, yeah. Because you know, I want people to know that a lot of girls liked Mark. I see a lot of girls like you, right? Right. It's right. easy for you to talk to girls, right? Yeah. Always. Yeah. So, did you have a lot of girls chasing you, or is it easy just to you know kiss and and touch and all that when you're younger? Um, yeah, it was kind of easy for me. The girls were nice. Because, you know, I was talking to um to Lex and to Dredd. 
Okay. They're both from New York. Right. Right? Right. It seemed like the girls in New York weren't giving any pussy up <laughs> <laughs> to these guys, right? right? But they gave it up to Pumper, right? Right. But they weren't giving it up to these guys, right? right. So that's why I'm asking, <laughs> you know? <laughs> like, so the girls in your neighborhood were cool. Right. Were friendly. Yeah. yeah. They weren't holding it back. No. <laughs> <laughs> Was Roy getting a lot of pussy, you know? Yeah. Yeah? <laughs> yeah? Yeah. He loved the, he loved the girls? Yep. So he had the best girls in his school or no? Uh, he had a lot of really, really beautiful white girls. Really? No <laughs> shit. He liked the white girls or they just liked him? They liked him. Yeah? Oh, that's cool. <laughs> well, I, you know, I think Roy doesn't uh, discriminate. <laughs> he'll, he'll take white, black, Asian, Mexican. <laughs> well, I talked to him. He seemed really cool. You know what I mean? Yeah. He seemed he like is. a cool guy. He's like a real, you know, not some delusion. He seemed pretty real. I mean, he, he right. was... You know, a great fighter. One of the, you know, you know, Roy. That's our kind of time, right? Yeah. You know, I don't think that any of the middleweights could touch him no. in his prime. He was just so fast. Anyway, so I respect that radical skill he had. Right. You know, so that's why I talk. <laughs> Anyways, <laughs> what kind of jobs did you have before porn? Um. Well, as a teenager, I did uh, fast food restaurants like McDonald's, Burger King, um, and then um, just different. Odd jobs, you know, and then just normal yeah, shit. Normal job. Nothing. I know. I remember you told me one time there was no way you really want to do any physical labor. <laughs> 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 no, you know, one time um, my brother-in-law uh, helped me get a job. He did construction, right? He did roofing. Oh, that's. And, <laughs> and so I went, right? I only went for one day. It was so hot on that roof. <laughs> I never went back. I went and got a job at the public library. <laughs> so I could be inside and under the air conditioner. You know, I did that for a week, I think. Roofing. Right. I was like, this is fucking hell. <laughs> right. That's because it was hot, you know, in the desert. Right. So yeah, it's fucking hell. Those ro roofers go through hell. Right. But, you know, what was funny is that his coworkers, right, they was making bets to see if I was going to come back the next day. <laughs> but I wasn't coming back. So the, whoever said I wasn't coming back won. <laughs> <laughs> really? Yeah, man, it's rough. That's some yeah. rough shit. Yeah. Carrying the stuff up the ladders, carrying the tiles up the ladder and all that on all the right. sun. And those guys, they working 12 hours a day, right? Sun yeah. up, sun down. Yep. So those guys are gangsters. <laughs> <laughs> right. You just sometimes people are lucky enough to go a different route. Right. And some people get stuck in that quicksand because that's quicksand. Oh, yeah, definitely. You, you can't get out, maybe. Right. <laughs> Till you're dead. <laughs> so I know you went to college, right? Yeah. How many years of college did you go to? I did uh, four years. Four I years? Yeah. I did have a bachelor's in psychology. Yeah, four years. How was that in school? How was that college? What college was it? Uh, well, I... Uh, I went to uh, San Diego City College for two years, which is like a um, community college. And then uh, after that, I uh, transferred to Cal State Dominguez Hills in, in uh, L.A. And so then I finished my two years there. Uh -huh. So now I know why. So I'm going to move on to the next question. Why you're in San Diego, which probably leads to this question. So why did you join the Navy what was it like being stuck on a ship with a bunch of dudes? <laughs> <laughs> okay. Well, um, I joined the Navy because um, my girlfriend was pregnant with my son at the time. So I was like, man, I need to make some money. <laughs> so I joined the Navy. And, um, and then I got uh, stationed in San Diego. And uh, <clears throat> actually, when I got to the ship, the ship wasn't in San Diego. It was in the United Arab Emirates because it was during the first Gulf War. Oh, shit. Right? So now I'm over there in the desert. But um, the ship that I was on was a supply ship, so they had women. Really? Yes. What do you mean supply? They're supplying women? No. Oh, it's a, it's a, uh, it's, it's not a fighting ship. I got you. It's not mm -hmm. like, uh, it's like we re resupply other ships with whatever they need, resupply, submarines, whatever, whatever they need. And then some of the people, they will repair the other ships, you know, like if they needed something repaired, like welding or whatever. Mm -hmm. So a lot of people on our ship would repair the other ships. Um, but, uh, yeah, there were women. No shit. So was that by chance, or did you ask for that ship? Um, I 
like uh, when when you go to the school part for the Navy. So you take all these classes and you have to take tests, right? And so maybe there was 30 people in my class, right? And then you they give you a list of ships that you can choose. They tell you what state, what, what city it's in, what country it's in. And so they give you a list. And so you get to choose from that list based on your score in the class from the different tests you take. So it was 30 people and I was number seven. And so I had a dream the night, like they was like, okay, here's the list. Next day you guys got to choose, right? And you know, you're number seven on the list, right? And so um, I had a dream. I didn't know which ship to choose or which country. You know, they had Japan, they had Florida, they had uh, San Diego, San Francisco. So that night before I had to choose, I had a dream. And I, in a dream, I chose a ship that name started with the M. Well, there were uh, two ships that started with the M, right? And so um, the, the other ship, which was the Midway, it was in Japan. Uh, somebody else chose that. So I was only left with the McKee, which was in San Diego. Hmm. And so then you ended up United Emirates? Yeah. So what is that exactly? The Arab, Arabia or something? Or where is that? Yeah, it's like not far from um, Saudi Arabia. Um, it's like near the uh, the Red Sea, you know. Mm -hmm. It's a nice place. Yeah. Yeah. With the girls, I mean, did you fuck the Arab girls? No, it's no. hard. It's hard <laughs> to get the Arab girls. Really? Yeah, but there's a lot of um, Filipino girls there that work as nannies, maids, I heard that. work at restaurants, and so. I found this underground Filipino club. <laughs> <laughs> really? Some fine ass bitches? <laughs> but then also too, they have a lot of um, Indian girls there from India. Uh -huh. And so they were easy to talk to also. But the Arab girls, nah, no, they really? won't even look at you. <laughs> well, that's scary, right? <laughs> and a lot of them, they cover it from head to toe, just barely their <laughs> eyes. I've seen them. I've been a, it's crazy. I've been to Egypt, right? Egypt's right. same deal. Right. Pretty crazy. Yeah. It's, it's pretty crazy for the women that they have to live like that. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. So it's almost like slavery kinda of in a way, right? Yeah. Because you can't really do anything. One false move they'll cut your head off or some shit like that, right? Right. <clears throat> Anyways, I mean I think it's that way in um Armenia, right? No, no, in um the you know, next door is Afghanistan. No. Iraq? I, Iran. Saudi Arabia. Iran. Yeah. Iran's like that heavy, right? Yeah. That's what I, Iran like uh, they, uh, recently, because the, they have to wear the, it's called the hijab, right? And I guess the one girl, she at wore it wrong, so they arrested her. And then she died in jail. And they had a lot of protests. I saw that. And they arrested a lot of those people. Huh? And they killed some. Yep. Yeah, it's disgusting. And that's why we appreciate freedom of speech right. in America. Right. I'm not going to go into it, but we understand that it's the most important thing we have, freedom of speech. Right. Anyways. So did you go other places or did you just stay there on the ship? No. Uh, so we were, the ship, when I got on the ship, it was in the uh, United Arab Emirates, and I think we stayed there for like three months. And then we left there, went to... Uh, Singapore, uh, went to Thailand, went to Japan, went to the Philippines, and uh, Hawaii. Oh, shit. So you were having some fun? <laughs> you know, uh, the Philippines is an interesting place. <laughs> what? Yeah, I mean, what spot, what what port did you hit Philippines at? Um, Phuket. I, Phuket. No, that's Thailand. Oh. Uh, Philippines. Oh, the Philippines. You said Philippines. Um, um, what's uh, Subic Bay? So is that south? Um, it's kind of, I would say Subi Bay is maybe like two hours away from Manila. South? Yeah. South. Yeah. So, yeah, I mean, and that's kind of way back, so it's kind of more, so they, those Filipino girls love the Navy men, the American Navy men? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> so how many girls did you fuck out there? Uh, I can't even count. <laughs> really? So it's easy? Easy pickings? Hi, how's it going? Boom? 
Right? Really? They come up, they come up, you know, because they know you're American sailors. They come up to you. Really? Yeah. No money. You know, just give me some. They just want some um, dick. You know, sometimes they want money, but it's, yeah. it was only like ten dollars. <laughs> I got you. So half and half. Yeah. Some girls just want to, you know, hang out and fuck. Yeah. Because a lot of girls liked you, right, Mark? Yeah, but I mean, you know, also too, it, it didn't hurt that you know that I was in the navy and they like mm -hmm. the sailors and you know. Oh yeah, it's romantic kind of like the movies and stuff. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, a uniform man, something like that. Right. But I mean, we gotta um, give credit where credit due. To get in the navy is not that easy, right? No. You had to be smarter to make it through. Yeah. Right, and you scored a high score. Yeah. What happened was um, when I was in high school, they had the ASVAB test, right? And so I was like, okay, I'll take it, you know. Cause I wanted to get out of the class, right? But I wasn't serious, and at that time I wasn't thinking about the military, so I took it and I got a okay score. So then, when I wanted to go ahead and join the Navy, uh, the um, the Navy recruiter, he's like, "Hey, you know, you should uh, take the test over. You know, see if you can get a better score because the higher your score, the um, better job that you can get. You know, you have more choices, opens up more choices of jobs. So I was like, okay. So I kind of studied for it, right? And I took it. And then the results came back that um, I qualified for every job in the Navy except for one, which was a nuclear technician, and I didn't want to do that anyway. <laughs> All right, my cousin's son is going to do that one. Yeah. 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 But um, so well, did they pay any money? I mean, what kind of money did you – any money? Um, I mean, it was it was decent. And then also uh, I was I qualified for a bonus, and it was like a $10,000 um, signing? signing bonus, yeah. But you, what would you make, about two thousand dollars a month, yeah. something like that? Yeah. And that's because the army is cheaper, or is it the same all the way around? I think it's the same all the way around. It just it depends on your your rank. So since I had already taken some college classes, um, instead of going in as an E one, which is the lowest, I was able to go in as an E three. So I was able to make a little bit more money. I see. Um, because they accepted my college classes that I took. <laughs> So you you took a little bit of college courses. You went to the Navy. Well, how old were you when you went to the Navy? Nineteen. Nineteen, and then you spent how many years? Four. Four years in the Navy, yeah. and then you went to college. Well, I was take the the whole time I was in the Navy. I was taking classes at night. At, at the college. Yeah, at San Diego City College. Yeah. So you're only in United Emirates for a little while, and then you went back to San Diego. So we were so. We were in the United Emirates for like uh, three months, and then we headed back. But then we made stops, so that was like another three months. So it was like six months all together before I got back to uh, San Diego. So you're young. It's pretty exciting to go fuck all these, you know, foreign <laughs> girls, right? Right. But you like the Filipino girls the most? Uh, I think the Thai girls. The Thai girls? Oh, yeah. so you're saying Phuket? Yeah. You said Phuket. Yeah, that Phuk was in Thailand, yeah. No, yeah, but Phuket it was, was not that popular back when you were 19 years old, right? No, you know what I mean? Because it wasn't that big. You know what it looks like now? It's humongous. Because yeah. I was there in 1994, I think I was there. Right. And it was still, you know, it was, it was building up, but now it's insane out there. It? You know, it's crazy. You can't even, it doesn't even look like the same place. So you were there in what, 1992? 91. 91, 92. Yeah. So, it was even more because I was in, yeah. I was in Bangkok in 1991 myself, right? And uh, Koh Samui, there's nothing in Koh Samui in '91, right. anyways. So it was, you know, they really compared to now must have loved you in Thailand, <laughs> right? <laughs> and some pretty girls too. <laughs> well, I'll tell you a funny story, right? So you know, we get off the ship, and then we get off the ship. There's girls on the beach, and then there's guys that like. Like tour guides, right? They got a car or a taxi, or whatever. Tut tut, you know, little tut tuts. Yeah, and so they'll take you to the uh, the um, whorehouse, right? So we walk into the to the whorehouse, and um, it's a huge <coughs> room, and it's a, like a huge couch that wraps around the room, and there's like fifty girls in the room, right? So I'm like, wow, this is good. <laughs> so um, I pick a girl, right, and I take her back to the hotel. And then uh, we start like uh, having sex, <laughs> and then she's like, she couldn't do it. She said it hurt, right? So I was like, oh, that sucks, right? So the next day, I go back to the same place, about fifty girls, and I walk in. Half of the girls stand up and walk out. Really? 
Oh, that's fucked up. <laughs> that's some they bullshit. Said I was too big. <laughs> that's crazy, man. <laughs> so then you, <laughs> why did you like Thailand be better then? Um, I mean, there still was, uh, you know, some some good girls to choose from, you know. So I just chose a different one, and, and this time she was fine. She didn't complain. I know what you're talking about, though. <laughs> Same thing, you know, similar things. Not like that when they ran out, but they ran out the door. <laughs> John John T. Bone flew me to Thailand to do uh, TT's Oriental Adventure in 1991. Oh, yeah? Yeah, those girls, and I was, you know, maniac. Right. And they were, ah, help! <laughs> I just loved them, you know what I mean? But anyways, <laughs> I know what you're saying. But you know, there there were some really pretty girls. It seemed like the girls were prettier back then, yeah. for some reason. You know what I mean? Yeah. It seemed like it. But anyways, was there any porno mags on the ship? Oh yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, VHS, uh, magazine, tons of magazines. So you can watch porno in your room. VHS. Uh, no, they they uh not in your room, but they had a TV room, and uh, <laughs> yeah, people would. Put a porn in. Really? Yeah. Oh, shit. <laughs> but there was girls running around, so it wasn't that crazy. Because you got to be careful, right? <laughs> right. Anyways. Were you watching porno? When did you first start looking at porno mags? How old were you? Probably like seven. <laughs> <laughs> Where'd you get my, them? Uh, my uh, stepdad. Oh. Uh, uh, Playboy magazines, penthouse, all kinds of Hustler? magazines. The harder yeah. ones? But also what I did is um so in you know back in the day when they had the magazine they'll have a little car in the magazine so if you want to get a subscription right so but on the on the on the paper it says uh you can pay later right so i filled it out and i put my stepdad's name and i put pay later and so the magazines would come to my house but i would get home from school before they were home so i was able to get all the magazines one time, my mom got the magazine, but it had his name on it. <laughs> <laughs> he got him busted. <laughs> He's like, I don't know. I didn't order that. <laughs> I'm sure you didn't. That's fucked up, man. So, so you were watching it. You love those magazines? Yes. They, the, they were hairy pussies kind of back then, right? Yep. It was kind of interesting, right? Yep. See, more, um, more erotic or more, um, I don't know. What's the word? More like... Um, Central? No, like like more taboo with the hairy pussies, right? right. It just has, it just seems more like, you know, it just seems different with hairy pussies right. when you're younger, right? Because, right. you know, there's hair down there, right? Because, you know, you don't know the girls got hair on their pussies, really. So, right. you know, if they're bald, it doesn't seem as much because you're, you're young, you got no hair on your fucking dick, right? Right. And so you <laughs> see hair on a girl's pussy, you're like, whoa, what's that, right? <laughs> You know, because right. the whole girl is smooth until fucking that bush. <laughs> so it seems more exotic and more, you know, like I said. You know? My favorite magazine was uh, We. Yeah, I like it. Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. And when I got a little bit older, I had like little side jobs, cutting people's grass and stuff. So I would go downtown and get a homeless guy. Like, hey, I'll give you $5. Go to the store and get me the We magazine. <laughs> and they used to do it. Yeah, yeah that's cool. <laughs> And I used to, after I got my use out of them, I would take them to school and sell them to somebody. No else. shit. People are loving, huh? <laughs> yeah. That's cool. You the, it was Hood where you were going? Huh? Was it Hood school? Kind no, of Hood? No? No. So just that, everybody liked that them? That was when we were in the, and moved to the suburbs. Oh, so you're like, not seven, any, you're yeah. older? Yeah. Uh, yeah, because if you're selling magazines at seven, you <laughs> might get, they might catch you. Because <laughs> people talk, right? <laughs> right. But, uh, I well, actually, um... Uh, when I was in high school, uh, I got busted because I told the guy, I was like, listen, do not put these magazines. Like, he, he was a good customer. He would buy every magazine that I bought, right, that I brought to school. I was like, listen, don't put these under your bed because um, if your mom finds them, she's going to know it's yours because it's under your bed. I was like, find somewhere outside. So if she finds them, they're outside. Somebody else could have put it there. He put them under his bed. Uh -huh. She found them, and he ratted me out. She's like, where do you get these magazines Fuck. from? Oh, I bought them from uh, Anthony from school. So now the next day I got to go to the principal office. Why am I selling? <laughs> what happened? 
Um, Suspend your ass or no? Huh. I, he just told me don't. Don't. Oh, yeah? don't he was do cool, that. huh? Yeah, well, like, a nice guy. That. Don't do that no more. <laughs> well, that's nice of him. Huh. But I still want to fight that guy. This <laughs> really? But I didn't fight him, but I wanted to. <laughs> but you weren't fighting that much in high school, you said? No, no. <laughs> were you stronger than a lot of people? Yeah? I know. Yeah. You were, did you do sports? Yeah, I did uh, track. I did the uh, 800 meter, but also uh, I was on the weightlifting team. Oh, yeah? Yeah. Oh. So what was your um, your favorite exercise or your best exercise on the weightlifting? And how much were you lifting? Uh, bench press. I did 335. Once? Yeah. And then um, you had pretty, I know you, I see you run, you know. You yeah. had a pretty good speed yeah. <laughs> pretty fast right yeah. but your 800, 800 was your best but um you're yeah. you're pretty strong legs right yeah yeah so you felt stronger were you you feel stronger than most of the people in your school you had some big strong dudes there well it was like kind of weird because i was kind of skinny mm -hmm. but i still was able to like lift a lot of weights and so a lot of people were shocked like how can you do lift so much weight like you know i was i, I was skinny back then how much weigh when you're doing 335 Maybe 150. 150? Well, that's pretty 160. good. 160. Yeah. 150, 160. Yeah. I think I benched um, 350 when I weighed 162. Right. Right, same. Yeah. But your arms are probably longer than mine, so it's yeah. a little bit harder. Yeah. But I used to, um, military, sitting down, I could do 225 for one or two reps. Okay. Yeah. How about that? You yeah, do that that's one? Pretty, yeah. That's pretty hard. I could do 225 like five times. Sitting down? Yeah. No, no, but press. Shoulder press. Yeah. Really? Yeah. Five <laughs> times? That's pretty strong. <laughs> really? Yeah. You sure? Yeah. I mean, also when I was um, in the Navy, they had, uh, you know, weightlifting contests, uh -huh. and I won. Really? Yeah. Oh, wow. <laughs> well, because that's pretty hard, 225 to shoulder press. Right. With a barbell. Well, that wasn't the, the um, it was only uh, the bench press. You won on the bench press, yeah, I but the barbell, but I mean, you know, barbell shoulder press. Yeah, you could do that yeah, five times. Five times, yeah. Oh, wow, that's pretty good. It's <laughs> pretty strong. You got me beat. <laughs> I got you beat by the by the bench press though. <laughs> Fifteen pounds. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> it's all good. That's pretty strong though. A lot of people can't do that exercise that good. Right. right. But some people can. Some people are strong as fuck. Well, I uh, <laughs> also too. Um, I won a lot of bets because people would look at me and everything. No way he can lift 300 pounds or 315 mm -hmm. pounds. And so they will bet money. <laughs> I won a lot of money. Really? Wow. And they were nice and strict or you just got them up? Huh? The, the exercise was nice and strict? You know, sometimes, you know, you can cheat a little bit with a little body momentum. Oh, um, no, you know. Um, so what I would do, though, because I didn't want people to, like, get mad because they lost their money. <laughs> So I would pretend like I was struggling. Oh. <laughs> so, they, so you know, at one moment they're thinking like, oh, he ain't going to be able to do it. Then at the end I'll do it. And then they got to give up the money. But if I would have did it easy, I might have to fight some of those guys because he's like, nah. Really? <laughs> yeah. Fuck him. <laughs> <laughs> Anyways, so what was the first part you watched? Oh, man. Um, uh, I'm trying to remember. I used to remember the name of it. I think it was called Purple Haze or something like that. Uh, Ray Victory, Shawn Michaels. Really? Uh, Shawn Michaels? Whoa, so that's older. Yeah. You're older. No, no. Uh, maybe I was... Well, when the you know the, the VHS came out, so... Um, you had to be at least 18, because I mean, no, Shawn Michaels, same time as me. No, I wasn't 18. I think I was 15, maybe? 16? I don't think that's possible. Because Shawn Michaels started in 89. At the beginning of 89, I started at the end of 89. Mm -hmm. the, almost, anyways, right. so that would mean, you know, the movie takes a right. couple months to get out, three or four right. months, you know. So <clears throat> it could have been 89, you know, right. you watched it, but, mm -hmm. but you know, that's when the, he started. But yeah, Ray Victor, he died. Did you know that? Uh -uh. I didn't know that either until I looked it up, and I would say, well, he died. Oh, wow. I think he died in 16 or 17, something like that. Oh, wow. Yeah, he was a nice guy. You never got to meet him. It was before your time, but yeah. I worked with him a couple of times, side by side. You know what I mean? Right. He was a nice guy. He was cool, <clears throat> but Shawn Michaels took all the work. Right. <laughs> <laughs> Shawn Michaels cleaned house. You right. know what I mean? <laughs> anyway, so, 
So you watch, you start watching the pornos regularly. Yeah. <clears throat> Dude, was there any porn star girls that you said, "Fuck, I want to fuck her. She's beautiful. I love her." Um. So how I used to watch porn? It's like if I see a girl in the movie, then and I like her and I have a crush on her, then I'm gonna try to rent every movie that she's in. You know, right? So it doesn't matter what the movie is or what company it is. I just want to see that girl. So maybe two of my favorite in the beginning, one was uh, Janet Jackme, and two was Mimi Miyagi. Those are both good girls. <laughs> <laughs> you work, you work with Janet Jackme. Yeah. This when she came back for working for us. Yeah. Because you obviously weren't around then when she no. was working. Yeah. But she, I gotta let you know she was one of my favorite girls ever. I loved her. I think she loved me too. Right. You know what I mean? Because <laughs> we had some serious chemistry. Right. But um, she but, was incredible. Yeah. yeah. I never got a chance to work with uh, Mimi Miyagi, but I did meet her in Vegas, right? And I took a picture with her, and I was trying to talk to her, but you know. <laughs> She's hard to talk to, but um, I fucked her probably five, six, seven times. Never off camera, but you know, she right. was, she had some good pussy. She was sensual. Some about her, you know what I mean? Right. Some about her. She was great. Yeah. She was sexy. She was. She was cool too, but. I think people liked her right away. You yeah, know what I mean? So yeah. she probably had some fans. Right. You know, but, uh, you know, she was cool. She was nice. The Mike Rubenstein went out with her for a little while. Oh, okay. Did you know that? Yeah. No, I didn't know that. Anyway, Mike is the guy who started Devil's Film. You know that. Right. Anyway. But um, so then you you like those girls. So how, why, when, where, how did you get in the porno? Okay, Uh. so... I'm in, I had got out of the, the Navy, and uh, and I was going to school, San Diego City College, and I met a girl, and she was a, a Japanese girl, right? Um, and so we started dating, but then we would uh, watch porn together, you know? And then one day she was like, hey, we should see if we can make some of these movies. I was like, oh, okay, cool. So I was like, all right, let me see if I can find some phone numbers and call and see how we can do this. So I called uh, Ed Powers office. Why? Because the number was on the uh, box cover. What did it say? Oh, call. Okay, you saw the box cover. You said call. Huh. So I called, and um, there was a girl that answered the phone, and she said, "Oh, if you are your," I said, "Hey, me and my girlfriend want to, you know, do movies. Uh, how can we? How can we start?" And she's like, "Oh, let me give you this phone number. You got to call World Modeling." So she gave me the phone number. And I call, and the first time I call, I talk to Jim. He uh, answered? Yeah. I call, he said, I said, hey, me and my, um, I was like, I'm black, my girlfriend's Japanese, and we want to do porn. He's like, okay, you guys got to come up to L.A. I was like, oh, we can come up next Wednesday. And so we went up there the uh, next Wednesday, they took picture, pictures of her, and then they gave me a magazine, right, and told me to go and get myself ready, and when I'm ready, they'll come in to take the picture. And I'm like, well, can my girlfriend help me? They was like, no. You got to do it really? yourself. Oh, yeah. yeah. They don't want you got a bullshit going on. Yeah. Right. So I did it. I called them in. They took the picture. And then they sent us around to some different companies and directors. And uh, we ended up working together the really? first day. Yeah. The first day? First day. Wow. So that was kind of like, were you, so you really weren't nervous thinking about this scene, were you? No. You just got there and you did it? Yeah. Really? Like I wasn't really thinking about it. Yeah? Yeah. Maybe like, maybe the third time. It kind of, like, because it was more people on set. Uh -huh. Then I started thinking about it. Yeah. When you got to the set, you said, fuck, there's a lot of people? Yeah. Now it's like, fuck. <laughs> this is serious. <laughs> Starting to sweat? Right. <laughs> oh, it's because they're a big set. Because the yeah. other set was a small set. Yeah. What year was that? Um, I want to say it was 95, maybe? 96? Yeah. Hmm. I know... That you can't, that I think I met you in 97, I think. Yeah, because well, what happened was I had did a, like a couple of videos with uh, my girlfriend, but then I started working with other girls. But um, I graduated from college, right? And then I moved to Denver, and I was in Denver for like a year. And then I came back to L.A., and then that's when I met you when I started back again. So did I miss something? Why did you move to Denver? Because uh, I graduated and I got a job. In but Denver. you were, really? But you were doing porn. You said it wasn't really working that much? Um, it was like, uh, it wasn't, 
steady. Like maybe I'll get one job a week or something like that. So it wasn't really I see. like, like I didn't think that I could make a living mm -hmm. from that. Like I would thought like, okay, I'll get a job and then whenever I can do a movie, then I'll do a movie and just make some extra money, you know? Uh, I see. So, so you did okay your first scene? Yeah. Second scene? Yeah. Third scene got rough? Yeah. You failed or you made it? Oh, what happened was I got lucky, right? Because <laughs> <laughs> now it's about five people there. There's a makeup artist. There's somebody with catering with the food. There's an assistant. There's a cameraman and, you know, the director, right? So I'm like, oh, shit. This is serious. They got these big lights. They got two cameramen. <laughs> and there's dialogue, right? Who is this for? You remember? Um, I'd like to know. It could have It could have been... It could have been video team. Chris Mann. Yeah. Could video been, team. Yeah, it could have been video team. I can't remember for sure. So I was playing a doctor, and uh -huh. then uh, I think it was called Night Shift, not Night Shift Nurse, it's something nurse, but um, so uh, did the dialogue, and then we start the scene. And uh, I was sweating, and I was <laughs> and I was struggling, and I was trying to figure out like, oh man, what can I do? And then um, the camera stopped working, right? What? The camera stopped working. Whoa. Right. That gave me a break. And the girl, she was cool. So we were like having sex while he was trying to figure out what was wrong with the camera. So it took him about 15 minutes. So once the camera came, well, he, you know, he fixed the camera, you know, I was good to go then. Really? Who was the girl? Uh, D. See, she's cool. Nice tits. Yeah. So who was who was the first person you worked for? You remember? You have to remember that. Um, I think it was uh, Ron Hightower. Really? Yeah. How much you get paid? Uh, a hundred and fifty dollars. <laughs> yeah. Each. But, uh, no, they paid her. I think they paid her two fifty. They paid her two fifty. They got one fifty, and I was like, I was happy. I was like, oh, I got one hundred and fifty dollars for something I would have did for free. <laughs> so did you? So you're watching these movies, kind of when you went to do it because you signed up for Ed Powers. So did you see who who are the people that you liked in the business? So you liked what girls and what guys did you like? Um, it's not like you like the guys, but sometimes right. you see the actors. He seems cool. Right. Right. Oh, uh, you know, Ray Victory, Shawn Michaels. Huh? Um, All right. And then, you know, like I said, Janet, Janet, Jack Me, and uh, Mimi Miyagi. No, uh, Nisa. Do you remember her? Anissa, Filipino girl, kind of skinny. I don't know. Maybe. I mean, that doesn't come to mind. Oh, yeah, of course. No, I don't. <laughs> no, she was skinny, yeah. <laughs> yeah. She was, yeah, she, she loved me. Yeah. Oh, she loved me, right. right. She totally loved me. She was a very nice girl. Right. She, also, yeah. I, I, I liked your movies too. I saw your movies before I started. You mean just me as a regular actor, or yeah, yeah just, not yeah, Blackstreet, just as an actor. Yeah, like you worked a lot for Rosebud. Uh huh. I worked for everybody, but you saw yeah. the Rosebud because there's more anal in there. Yeah. Well, <laughs> uh, Mimi Miyagi worked for them yeah. a lot. <laughs> so. Yeah, she worked for her, yeah. Oh, so you were chasing, looking for her? I see. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Yeah. They started that company. We know with Alex Dorenzi. Right. Henry Fashar too. You right. know, and um, my group and they all started the company together. Right. Which was, <clears throat> you know, was cool. They used me a lot. It was nice. Alex Renzi was a very famous guy. You know, people. Yeah, I, I've met him a couple of times. I never yeah. uh, worked for him, but he was always nice. You know? Yeah. Anyway, he was, he started porno, making porno, I think, in 1969, 1970. Wow. And he was a very interesting guy that actually made a lot of money making movies. He was a talented movie maker. Right. right, so he could make films. He was shooting all film back then. So he would make these films that people liked, and he made a lot of money. And he bought property in Frisco, so he had money. Right. He had uh, some, you know, next to Mitchell Brothers, there's a, a theater down the street. He owned that one, owned another one on Market Street. He was kind of slick, kind of smart, you know what I mean? Right. And anyway, he bought a big giant ship. And sailed around the world, the big navy ship. Oh wow! <laughs> right, <laughs> sailed around the world. He had big balls, right? right. I mean, that's kind of crazy, right? <laughs> Anyways, he was a cool dude. You know, he, he was very nice to me. We worked with him a lot, but I give him respect. 
because he was a um, well-known filmmaker and a good filmmaker. And of course, so was Henry Pichard. Right. You know, Ron okay. Sullivan. Yeah. You know him, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. You work for him? Yeah. Okay. He died, you know what I mean? They both died, but they were, you know, cool. And Mike was a hell of a guy, you know, obviously. Right. He helped get me started making movies. So, God bless Mike. So, um, so you moved to Colorado, right? right? Uh-huh. And you got a good job. So, what changed your mind to come back to wherever you came back? <laughs> um, you know, because I'm originally from Florida, right? So, I had never lived anywhere where it snowed. So I went from Florida to San Diego, you know. Beautiful. San Diego's right, beautiful, right? Right. And so it doesn't snow, right? I moved to Denver. And uh and uh the the the, the summertime the is beautiful there. The springtime is beautiful, then winter hit. Yeah. <laughs> and so I uh I had made up my mind, I was like, you know, uh I'm gonna stick it out. I'm gonna stick it out through this winter <laughs> to see if I can make it, right? And but it was difficult. Um, you you come outside in the morning. Your car is covered with snow and ice. So now you gotta <laughs> scrape the ice off the car. And so uh, also the car that I had. This is before like you can uh, remotely unlock the door. So you gotta stick the key in. It's frozen. <laughs> so you gotta go in the, ha- in the uh, house. You can't put hot water on it because it's gonna crack the windshield or crack the lock. So you, I had to go in the house get a um, hair dryer and an extension cord and bring it out there and melt the ice off of the lock so I can stick the key in to get in the car. <laughs> you hate it. Um, uh, black ice. I almost got into an accident because I'm on the freeway and the car in front of me stops on the brakes a little bit and I tap on my brakes a little bit and my car just it starts rocking back and forth. Then it starts spinning and cars are barely missing, hitting me. Going head on almost. Yep, and then I closed my eyes and let the steering wheel go, and then the car stopped. And then when I opened my eyes, it was all white. I was like, "Oh shit, am I in heaven?" <laughs> I was really? up under the snow in the in the median. <laughs> in the middle? Yeah, in the median. Yeah. Wow. Oh. But it was like snow up to here. My car was completely covered in snow. So when I was sitting in the car, I was like, uh, before next winter time, because it was almost the end of winter. I was like, before next winter time comes, I'm moving back to L.A. <laughs> <laughs> well, L.A. or San Diego? L.A. Oh, so you were living in L.A.? You yeah. said, no, San Diego, I'm going to move to L.A.? No, no, when I was in Denver. Because no, it, what it, happened was I, went, I left San Diego, right. right, after I graduated from City College, and then that's when I went to school at Cal State Dominguez Hills. Oh, and that's yeah. when I did, like, a couple videos while I was in college. So, But Dominguez Hills is where? It's in uh, it's near like Carson. Oh, okay. Yeah. So L.A. Yeah. All right. Yep. So then you you said fuck it, I'm going to L.A. Yep. So then what happened? You moved to L.A. and then, um, moved back to L.A. and um, and what was the job anyways? That was so exciting oh, to go to Colorado. Oh, it wasn't so exciting, but uh, I was working at a group home. Oh, okay. Yeah. Using your degree. Yeah. Okay. Yep. Um, how much did you get paid for that? Hmm. Man, I can't remember. Nothing that special. Was so, long ago it was okay like nothing crazy just uh-huh. like normal you know um but what happened was when i uh put in my you know i stayed for the summer and then the winter time was starting and so i put in my two-week notice right and now i told her hey nah you know I, I, i'm moving back to la i can't handle this winter time and so they uh offered me a promotion to be the manager of the of the group home, you know, which is more money, and then I get to choose my schedule. And I thought about it. No, nah, I'm good. <laughs> <laughs> so you went to L.A. Where L.A. or where? What city? You know, where'd um, you go? When I, what city? When I moved back, I was living in. Uh, I was living in uh, Costa Mesa. Okay. Yeah. Oh, so that's still pretty far. Yeah, cause I had a, uh, I was dating this girl and she lived. She she was going to Irvine College or she lived, you know. So uh, she lived in Irvine, so I was staying with her. But what happened was when I came back, you know, I was looking for a job. I wasn't thinking about porn at first, but then I ran into Mr. Marcus, and at that time, Mr. Marcus had started directly. So did you meet him before? Yeah. La- the first time you met yeah. him, yeah. And you guys got along. Yeah. Okay. Yep. And so when I came back, 
I was, I think I was at a nightclub or something, and I ran into him there. And he was like, "Hey, man, you, you know, I, I'm directing now." I was like, "Oh, okay, cool." He's like, "You want to, you know, do a scene?" I'm like, yeah. What year was this? You say? Could have been '98. '98. Yeah, okay. Could have been '98 or '97, '98. End of '97, maybe '98. Yeah. Right. yeah. So you did a scene for him? Yeah. Well, that's nice of him. Yeah. Yeah, that's pretty cool. How'd it go? Went good. Yeah. yeah. And so, did you go back to Jim Souths? Yeah. And you said, hey, I'm back. How are you yep. doing? Can yep. you get me some work? Yep. And how did Jim do? Did he get you some work? Yeah. I mean, Jim, you know, Jim was like a, you know, a special, very, very special person to me. So right. what do you, what can you say about Jim South? Um, he was always nice to me and friendly and he got me work. A, a very good guy. Yeah. Super yeah. good guy. Super good guy, right? Yeah. You know, unlike most people probably. I mean, you know, we've seen some good people, but then some shit people, right? Right. But Jim was stood above and away from the rest, I thought. I think so, you know? definitely. His word was pretty solid. Right. And if he liked you, then you were in yeah. a great presence, you know? Definitely. Favors could come your way. <laughs> right. <laughs> <laughs> right? Right. I mean, I was lucky enough, of course, for him to... Well, I think one, one thing that, uh, that uh, Jim liked about me it's because I would bring girls for Oh, really? <laughs> <laughs> I would recruit girls and be like, hey, let's go to World Model and I can get you some work. <laughs> well, tell yeah. me about that. Tell people about that. <laughs> well, you know, when I, when, I, um, when I was in the industry, um, at that time, there was a lot of white girls that didn't want to work with black guys. They would say, oh, I don't do it in racial. But they don't do it in racial means they don't do black guys. Mm -hmm. So I'm thinking, like, when I go out to the nightclub in L.A. Or, or wherever, you know, I pick up a lot of white girls. So I'm like, why do these girls don't want to do black guys? So I started recruiting some of the white girls yeah. and brought them to the gym. That's cool. So you go to the club, pick up the girls, fuck them at home, whatever. Right. Be friends with them. Right. And say, hey, you want to make some money? Right. And then they'd say, sure. And Not all of them, but like yeah. you know, quite a few say, so yeah. Well, hell yeah, Jim like that. Right. right. <laughs> Everybody likes that. <laughs> yeah, all the movie stars might like that too. <laughs> so tell me about before you got into business, how many girls did you knock down, do you think? Uh, so uh, I, I'll tell you um, – Mr. Marcus asked me that same question when we first met, right? He's like, hey, how many, um, how many girls do you think you had sex with? And I'm thinking like, oh, yeah, about 100, right? And he's like, oh, that's cool. I was like, what about you? He said about 500. I think he was telling the truth, though. <laughs> I didn't oh, think yeah. he was lying. No, I don't think he was. Girls liked him, yeah. Yeah. So, so you had a sex with about 100 girls, and that was by age 24, 25? Uh, yeah. So you got girls, but they weren't just flocking, like, knocking on your door every day. Well, I wasn't, like, sometimes I would have a girlfriend, and mm -hmm. so then I wouldn't really mess around or couldn't really mess around because she's always around. Mm -hmm. So it wasn't like I was, like, trying to do it every day. Like, so I might have a girlfriend for a year, two years, you know. Awesome. So how many girls do you think you fuck now? <laughs> <laughs> I lost count. <laughs> Yeah, but on average. I don't know. Anywhere from three to five thousand. <laughs> <laughs> what about you? <laughs> uh, <we> know. <laughs> you know, I'm a maniac, right? So, I'm pro you know, 12 to 14, maybe. <laughs> wow. Okay. 12 to 14,000. I mean, I guess you could say the lowest would be 10,000, but I don't know how 10,000 would work. Right. You know what I mean? Right. But, um, you know, I slowed down over the years. A lot, you know what I mean? But, of course, <laughs> you know, I fucked a lot of girls. You already know that. Right, right. Have you ever seen any maniacs like me around? That many maniacs like me? No? Nah. <laughs> <laughs> nah. Yeah. Uh, Jim, you go back to Jim, right. right? Marcus got you going, so then you say, fuck it, I'm going to go back to Jim South. Right. Because I, I did the scene with Marcus. Was it a special girl you worked with? Who'd you work with? Um, Yeah, she's beautiful. Um, But I can't remember her name. Is she a girl that was working a lot or was she just some? Yeah, yeah really beautiful black girl. Oh, really? Yeah. What'd she look like kind of? Um, Kind of tall, skinny. 
skinny, um, kind of long curly hair, and she could sing. I mean, I could look it up if you want me to, but yeah, look it up. It was um, it was for video team. It was uh, my baby got back. Huh. Was the uh, movie, and uh, and. I'm not, I think she might have recently passed away, too. Oh, shit, huh? Yeah. <laughs> I think... I think it was... Yasmin Pendavis? Does that sound familiar? Mm hmm. I remember Yasmin. Brown, almost dark, right? Right. Yeah. Yeah, right. I remember. I think I remember. I don't think I got to work with her. I think I wanted to work with her. Yeah. yeah <clears throat> I think I saw her in a set a couple of times. Yeah. Yeah, she was hot. Yeah. Yeah, I didn't get to work with her. I remember her. I was chasing her down one, one day <laughs> on a set. She was like, no, no, no. I was like, all right. Well, yeah. So she was, she was good. She was cute. She was, she was. I want to say she's so beautiful, but she was pretty cute, right? Right. But all right, that's cool. So that makes sense. So then, um, you work with her. Yeah, that's her. Right. Yeah. She looks a little darker than that because that's light lit her up there. You can right. show her. Show her. This is the first girl you work with, Yasmin. She was, she was, yeah. She was almost six foot tall, five ten, five eleven, right? Yeah. All right, so um, yeah, she was she was sexy. I remember. So then you went to Jim South, he, and you said, "Could you give me some work?" Yeah. And he went. He got you work, cause, yep. mostly because you're bringing the white girls, or he was getting you work too. Um, he uh, he started getting me work, you know, and then um, I started, you know, so he was getting me work before I started bringing the girls, you know. Mm -hmm. So he got me yeah, quite work. a bit of work, and then you know, once you you work for somebody. And you work with a girl and everything goes well, then your name starts to get around like, okay, he's a dependable mm -hmm. uh, actor, you know? Mm -hmm. Yeah. And, um, you know, Jim South at that time is the only agent really in the United States. Right. You know, so if you can break in with Jim South at that point in time, then right. you got a made in the shade. Right. Well, um... What I what I found out is when I first went to Jim South, the only way that I was able to get in was because I was bringing my girlfriend, the Japanese girl. If I would have just called myself, it'd been hard. Yeah. Well, you're a good looking guy. You're in good shape, so it's possible. Right. If you would have kept coming, hey, you right. might have. But the fact that you had a girl right. expedited it right. rather quickly on <laughs> the same day, right. that's pretty fast. So that's cool. I mean, you know. It was just a beautiful time, don't you think? Yeah. I mean, it was. It's just a dream. It's almost like you're in heaven for me, you know what I mean? Because I was obviously, <laughs> it's just, you know, I could do no wrong with Jim, you know what I mean? Right. And I used to work, you know, like three or four scenes a day, sometimes five scenes a day. So wow. I just was like, you know, I mean, and, you know, and a lot of people couldn't perform that great. There was no Viagra. This is pre Viagra. Right. Right. So people have hard times. Yeah. You know, and uh, <clears throat> you know, I think some people t took coverage yet. You know what I mean? But right. I think that it would destroy their dick or something. I heard right. So right. then they would maybe do good for six months or a year, and then they'd be done. Right. Something like right. that, right? Yeah. I think I remember that. Anyways, so it was a beautiful, beautiful time. I say it every time because it's um, it's beyond your imagination. The beauty of it. Right. I think. Do you yeah. agree? Yeah, I agree. Definitely. So your favorite girls to work with were who again? Um, uh, D. D. Because she had your back. Is right. That why? Yeah. Okay. But I mean, she was she was good. You fuck her off camera? No. Huh? <laughs> <laughs> She's going out with Rob then, right? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Rob turned crazy. You heard <laughs> right. about that? Yeah. <laughs> he went and um, him and his buddy went and stabbed a hairdresser and killed him. Wow. You heard about that? Yeah. That's who crazy. Who was his buddy? I don't know. I who? think I know. Who? <laughs> I'm not going to say on uh, 
<laughs> on camera. Really? <laughs> yeah. So you in porno? I'm not going to say it on camera. <laughs> really? But I'm not sure, though. I'm not 100% sure. Oh, I don't know. But they, they didn't catch the, the friend. No, really? No, they never caught the friend. Whoa. But Rob is in jail, and the, he was messing around with the hairdresser's wife. She's in jail. I was but pretty... she, she's pleading not guilty. Rob took the deal. Took what deal? Murder? Life. Yeah. Life? For her? <laughs> Whoa. <laughs> well, I mean, I liked him. He was cool. You know what I mean? Yeah. I mean, he was my agent. Oh, he was your agent later? Yeah. What about Jim? No. So, um, you know, Jim will get the $100 for whenever I he got me a job, right, from the uh -huh. scene. But then I would give, if Rob got me the job, then I would give Rob uh, 10% oh, yeah? of whatever I made. Yeah, I don't know why Rob did that, but hey, everybody's got their own ideas. Right. Well, Rob had a lot of girls, right? Mm hmm A lot of the top girls that were black girls that were in the business. He had some sexy bitches. Right. So when when they worked, I worked. Oh. Right. So it was beneficial for me. <laughs> we had this one girl, I think we used it for mothers and daughters, light-skinned girl. She was petite, but she was so fucking cute. I fucked her at off camera a couple of times she was just she liked me at least she's from san diego do you remember that girl she was just so fucking cute oh uh i'm not sure i think i know who you're talking about so cute right like just you can't even look at her she's that cute <laughs> <laughs> right i mean she was really and she was nice she was really cool yeah you know, i don't know i think she wanted a relationship or something but you know i was hanging out with every girl in town <laughs> at that point in time but she was yeah but he did he had some pretty bad bitches he had his shit together. I don't know why he stabbed the guy. I mean, whatever, man. Anyways, you know, good luck to him. And, you know, fuck. You know? Right. Anyways, so, D, who else? Jenna Jackme. Jenna Jackme, yeah. Yeah. And that's it? And then uh, pretty, you can name any girl from Brazil. How about Midori? <laughs> yeah, she was good, too. She was fucking, wasn't she so pretty? Yeah. Her face, right? Yeah. Face or something. <laughs> and her pussy was bomb, too. <laughs> Who had the best pussy? Any girl, you could stick your dick in there and be like, ah. You know, you had a lot of problems. It was too good. Uh, I definitely would have to say Jenna Jackman was pretty good. Pretty good. <laughs> Even at that, because you got there when she was like in her 40s. Yeah. Right? It was still good. Still good? <laughs> uh, so, really? Anybody else? There's a lot of girls, man. You just like the Brazilian girls, but go ahead. Who else? Um... Mm, that's all I can think of right now. Really? But I mean, there was a lot of good ones. Let me name some for okay. you. Monique. Did you fuck her? Uh-huh. She was good. She was good. Midori, we already said. Mm -hmm. There was a girl named Baby Girl. Uh, she was like a light-skinned girl. She, I don't remember her. No? All right. How about, um, did you fuck Dominique? Simone? Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> really? <laughs> Yeah, she's so, horny. <laughs> I'll tell you. I'll tell you a quick story about that. So, um, I decided that uh, I would. I wasn't going to work on Sundays, right? Like no matter what. Why? Like, I just wanted a day off, you know. Mm -hmm. So I figured, okay, I'll just take uh, Sunday off, right? And so um, I think it was uh, Henry. What was it? Picard. Henry Bouchard. Bouchard. He called me. He was like, hey, you know, uh, I got a scene for you. You know, can you come through? And I'm like, oh, usually I don't work on Sundays. And he was like, uh, it's Dominique Simone. Okay, I'll be right there. <laughs> <laughs> and the bad part is I had this girl at my place. Oh. Right? And then I was like, hey, I got to go. <laughs> really? So you wanted to fuck her. So you were watching her back in the day. Right. Yeah. Yeah, you know I used to go out there, right? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> she had a, has a book out. Oh yeah. Yeah, a star is porn, right? right. So it's, it's kind of an interesting book because she was, she moves pretty fast. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean? She was always a fast mover, right? Right. So when she came in from Atlanta or you know from Valdosta, Georgia, Atlanta. Yeah, Valdosta. Yeah, and then via Atlanta, and then via right. here, you know, she um. Move pretty quick because I was going out there right away. You know what I mean? Right. And she was meeting every celebrity, everybody, <laughs> very quickly. <laughs> you know what I mean? So, 
Anyways, I was going out of there for a little while. But she put all that stuff in her book. Her book's interesting. Oh, okay. I I'll bought it. Check it out. Yeah, a star is porn. Okay. You know, on is you can buy it on Amazon. It helps support her. You know what I mean? Cause she was so she was a hot porno star for you. Oh yeah. Definitely. She was horny. Yeah. Yeah, I liked her. <laughs> yeah, she was yeah. cool. I mean, she you know she was sexy when I got to her, which right. was before she had any plastic surgery. She was you know just natural and, and sexy. Right. Anyway. She was horny as fuck. So who had, who gave you the best head? Um, I was a, a couple of girls. Um, um, do you do you remember Menaja Menaja? Oh yeah. What about her pussy? It was, was good, good too, but, but the head was off. The, she was <laughs> that long ass tongue. That was crazy, right? Like a right. serpent. <laughs> she was sexy. Yeah, I loved right. her. Yeah. And then there was a um. A white girl. I can't remember her name though. Um, I can't remember her name, but there was this white girl that was really good. Like she made me come early. <laughs> like we was doing a blowjob scene, mm -hmm. and it, she like it only took like a minute, <laughs> and I was already coming, but I wasn't supposed to. Let's let's knock down some. See if you work with some old school girls, like Gina Fine, because she sucked dick. No, nah. no, you remember her though, right? Yeah. How about Nina Hartley? Yeah. Oh, she sucked a dick. She was good. Is that right? Yeah, she was good. Yeah, you know, a lot of people love Nina Hartley. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Because of her brown butt. You know what I mean? What did right. you think of her? Yeah, she was nice. Is I like right? her butt. Yeah, she was good. You work with Amber Lynn, who's super cool. Yeah. What did you think of Amber Lynn? She was good. Sucked dick good, too? Yep. What about Chrissy Cannon? No, I no? didn't work with her. Okay. What about um, Kylie Ireland? No. No? Because he no. did one of our movies. Yeah, but I, I didn't work with her though. I think somebody else worked. You with fucked her. up, man. <laughs> I mean, you you directed it, right? I think I did. Because Kylie Ireland was her pussy was like you went to heaven really? twice. Wow. <laughs> Each stroke, <laughs> she was an incredible pussy. But um, all right. So what other girls? There's so many girls, right? Yeah. But you like the Asian girls? Um. I mean, yeah, I like Asian girls, but I mean, I, I didn't discriminate. <laughs> right. Okay. So, which girl had the best ass? I know you like fucking girls in the ass. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's a good question. Um, Melanchia Twa was pretty good. Yeah, she was just great all the way around. Right. So, right. so you remember her off the top um, of your head, huh? Um, India. India. Yeah. He, yeah. You brought her to my house that one day to right. do um. Black Street Eleven, I think. Right, right. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so India was good, yeah. Yeah. That's all. I have all those girls. Is oh, Jada Fire. Jada Fire. It's like her ass feels like a vagina. Huh? <laughs> well, you like ass better or vagina better? I like vagina. Me too. I like it way better. Right. <laughs> but it seemed to me like you always like to fuck the girls in the ass. Hey, I was just doing my job. <laughs> <laughs> no, but you like fun girls in the ass, Mark. Don't. Come on, man. Right? Oh, well, you know, I'm not opposed to it. <laughs> <laughs> what what type of girl really is your type of girl? Skinny, young looking, thick, you know, hood, you know, black, white, Asian, Brazilian, Spanish, Mexican, whatever you want to say. What is the girl that makes you, what's your perfect girl? Who do you love looking at that you can't stop looking at, you know? Give me an example of a girl and tell me, yeah. A uh, little baby. <laughs> <laughs> little Coco. <laughs> um, I'm not going to argue with you. Um, uh, um, uh, what was the name of the girl that we shot in Colombia? For the website, uh, it looked kind of young looking. Yeah. Little, little, uh, something, Lopez, Lopes, something. Yeah. <laughs> but you shot the most of it, but I can't really remember her, I can't remember what we called her, what her stage name was. Jenny, Jenny. Little Jenny, yeah, Little yeah. Jenny, right? Yeah. So that your type? So you like the girl looking young? No, she's just like, you know, I kind of like him petite, you know. Petite? Yeah. But you like him with young, too? <laughs> yeah, I mean, you're a porno star. 
Yeah, you, know, you can't. You don't got a problem. You're a pervert. <laughs> I mean, I'm a pervert. What the fuck? Right. Oh, you can't. You know, we think we're in a porno, <laughs> right? right. I mean, that's a fact. You know, we're not some fucking scholars at Harvard. Right. <laughs> we're porn stars. You like young girls looking young. Yeah, I'm not opposed to it. <laughs> <laughs> so it doesn't matter what color they are. Um, I mean, um. Maybe, you know, like in my personal life, I probably have more of a preference towards a uh, black woman. Yeah? yeah? You get along with them better, maybe? Yeah. But you married a white woman. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> right? Yeah. You married a, um, a Czech? Yeah, she's Czech? from Czech Republic. Yeah, yeah. Prague. And how was, how was that marriage? Um, It started out okay, and then it got rocky. <laughs> <laughs> what, what happened? I don't really want to go into uh, it. Because <laughs> she might watch this video. <laughs> oh, okay. No, but let me ask you a question, because, I mean... We know because we've been around the world. We know everybody wants a gold ticket to America, right? right? Is it part of that? Once the gold ticket to America is here, and then it's different, or is it just irreconcilable differences? Yeah, just uh, irreconcilable difference. Okay. I mean, I thought she's a nice person too, right? Mm -hmm. Just yeah. yeah. No, we still uh, we still get along. Okay. You know what I mean? She has mm -hmm. she's you know my daughter, so yeah. Jenny Dark was that her name? Yeah, Jennifer Dark. Jennifer Dark. Yeah. yeah. Yes, we work. She do. I mean, you met her on my set, probably, yeah, right? Yeah. In Czech, in Prague. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, she was cool. She she was looked like a model, kind of, right? Yeah. She was a five eight, five nine. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. She had that. You know, a lot of those girls in Europe, the Eastern Europe where we went, right. a lot of them looked like models. Yeah. They probably were, right? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> and they all like to get ass fucked. Right. <laughs> <laughs> and they all did interracial. <laughs> yeah. They know. So I was like, okay. You know, some 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 of the girls, the white girls that were in the uh, industry in the U.S. Um, they they didn't even compare it to the uh, European chicks, and I'm like, okay, all these European girls look like models, and they do interracial and anal, and then this girl, she's just okay, average white girl, and oh, I don't do black guys. Like, didn't make sense to me. I mean, I have to say, sometimes I would go to, let's say we go to South America, right? Right. We see in South America, probably, you know, probably Eastern Europe too, but I, I noticed that more in South America, that we see the girls would always want to dress up, right? Right. And tight jeans, show their bodies off, lit, makeup, do the hair perfect. Right. And I would say, damn, these girls are always interested in the men, right? Right. And sometimes I get off the uh, plane, and I go through immigration, walk up that ramp at LAX, and I would say... These girls don't look like they even like men. Right. You know, they look like saggy ass jeans and just, right. fuck you, motherfucker, right? <laughs> right. Yeah, not all of them, but you just felt that impression. Right. Am I wrong? No, you're right. You know, and I would say, why are these girls like men, <laughs> right? <laughs> and with bodies. We know right. a lot of girls in South America have bodies. Right. Serious bodies. Well, it was uh, definitely... Sometimes a difficult transition, like we're in Europe shooting, we're in Brazil, we're in Colombia, and then I got to come back to the States and work with some of these American girls with really bad attitudes. So, mm -hmm. you know, once you see the good stuff and then you got to come back here, I got to like readjust my thinking <laughs> to mm -hmm. be able to do scenes with these girls. In, in my time as a professional actor, a lot of girls had were professionals. Right. You know what I mean? Right. Like D, right? She's right. a professional, right? But I think as time went on, right. in the thousands probably you're talking more right. like, right? right? You think? And you probably got a lot of new girls sometimes. Right. That it became less professional right. attitude. Right. Right? Right. But if you're on a big set for Vivid or or Wicked or whoever, right? Even for Evasive, we like to keep them professional, right? right? You could see, you know, that they were there to work. But sometimes you didn't, you didn't see that in smaller sets. Right. They didn't really care. Anyways, yeah, but anyways, we saw a lot of girls in South America, but all over, right? The girls' bodies in South America are the best, but sometimes you have pretty good bodies in Europe. Yeah. Sometimes yeah. the faces sometimes are really pretty in Asia. Right. But they can't, the bodies can't compare on average to, no. to European or South Americans. No. 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 So where, which country did you love going to because we, a face of angles we flew everywhere we could find pretty girls right yep. and so what areas or what what trips 
You know, because you did all the trips. You right. were the main director for Evasive Angles. Right. And by the way, this show is brought to you by <laughs> EvasiveAngles.com. <laughs> right. So, out of uh, all the places, where? Well, you know, I think uh, most people probably always know the answer. Brazil. <laughs> <laughs> Brazil? Yes. That's your favorite place? Yes. Rio or anywhere? Uh, Rio, Sao Paulo. Yeah. Okay. Rio, so, so why? Oh, man. They have um, so many beautiful women in Brazil. And uh, there's a lot of uh, beautiful women that we shot that are in the Invasive Angles videos, right? Mm -hmm. But imagine some of the girls that, that said no, they didn't want to do the video were super hot, like supermodel hot. But I mean, we got a lot of them, mm -hmm. you know what I mean? But the, that was something that turned us down, like, no, I don't want to do any porn videos. Super beautiful. Good attitudes. Um, um, like, I think pretty much most of the scenes, the girls weren't acting. They were really into the sex. Yeah. Yeah. In Brazil? I mean... Yeah. Because, you know, when we're in different countries, it's hard sometimes when they don't speak English, right. Right? right? But, you know, some in Europe don't speak English. Right. And a lot of Brazilians did not speak English. Right. So sometimes it was hard for me to direct them, you right. know what I mean, to get them to do. Because, you know, I'm, I bust, I don't bust people's balls, but I work, you know, I, I want to get right. everything shot the way I want to shot, especially right. in the orgies. Right. And, um. So you know, sometimes it was difficult for me to get everything I want because people were saying, you know, fuck you. <laughs> <laughs> we don't want to do this anymore. <laughs> right? Not Usually it wasn't the guys, but there was one time I want to bring up that we were on Brown and Round number two, right? right. And Brown and Round was interesting because when we're shooting Brown and Round, you got a lot of different black girls and black guys right. from different hoods, <laughs> right? <laughs> right. And some are college girls, but some are blood, some are crips. And it gets pretty interesting, right? Because, you know, everybody's trying to get along, but one false move, right? It could right. be trouble. Am I wrong? Right. Was I there for that one? I don't think I was there for that one. No, when it, when no it Brown around. Fight? Yeah, no, when Brown around. No, no, I'm going to say, no, no, there's no fight. I'm saying Brown around two. Right. I think it, was, it could have been three, two or three. We were on set. Okay. Right? And, you know, I'm trying to get It's hard to shoot an orgy. You spend right. all that money. You need to get all the footage you can get, you know? Right. And two cameras doesn't do the job because it's in the way. You know what right. I mean? You can't really, it's really hard to shoot them. I mean, I invented, you know, certain angles for orgies. But there was a time when Lucky, you know, <laughs> was, you know, soft dick Lucky, right? <laughs> right. <laughs> he couldn't get going, right? And he, you know. Oh, yeah, I remember. Right? And so he started, he wanted to. Blame it on somebody, right? Right. <laughs> right. He blew whatever he did. You know, he blew out. It was right. hot. Who knows? It was late. You know, I don't right. know. It was the nighttime, right? And he wanted to get funny with me, right? Right. And you jumped up, right? <laughs> and you went crazy on him, right? <laughs> right. <laughs> I was like, well, Mark's got some spirit here. <laughs> and Lucky yeah, was like, <laughs> quiet, Mark has been crazy. Oh, shit. <laughs> yeah, he didn't say nothing. He just like, Put right. on his clothes and left. <laughs> <laughs> you scared him, right? But I don't know what, I think he wanted to show up in front of people. But I called right. him up the next day, right? right. <laughs> you know how I do it, right? Right. I say, hey, man, where you at, buddy? <laughs> <laughs> you know, because we can finish this up, you know what I mean? You know, since you you so, um, you know, you felt so bold, right? right. <laughs> I didn't, you know, I didn't need you to save me, but it was nice. Right. So I didn't want to have a, a lawsuit right, like, in front yeah, of everybody, yeah, right? right. But, um, you know, he said, uh, no, it's cool, man. <laughs> I said, you sure, buddy? <laughs> Anyways. Right. But, yeah, you jumped pretty pretty wild on that one. <laughs> anyway, so the orgies are hard to shoot sometimes. Yeah. So you like Brazil yeah. because the girls just overall look bomb. Yeah. Nice bodies. Skin. Yeah. Beautiful. Was the orgies your favorite ones to work in? Favorite movies to work in? Yeah, the... Uh uh, bubble butt Brazilian orgy, yeah. Yeah. Or brown around was harder sometimes. You like, um, yeah, brown around could be rough sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> so, I mean, you got a lot of different um, personalities. You got a lot of different attitudes. You got, you got there's a lot going on. <laughs> brown around is rough. I think I like brown around the best. 
You know, because right. it's the beautiful, the girls I like the most, right. but it was the roughest. Yeah. But probably the easiest one to shoot is next level in Europe, right? Right. That's yeah. the easiest one. Just with all the white girls. They were all professional and just right. didn't say much. Just right. ready to. Just kind of flowed. Yeah. yeah. It was easier. Yeah. And you can get all, well, we got sometimes eight or nine, ten girls in one scene. Right. A couple of those, yeah. So they're. You know, but they had a lot of pretty fucking girls in Europe. I, I mean, I, I'll never take that away from them. It's just not right. all my style, but right. there was a lot of beautiful girls, yeah, tall, definitely. sexy, look like all look like models. It's kind of interesting, right? Right. Yeah. yeah. Which girls do you like better, the Hungarian girls or the um, Czechoslovakian or the Ukrainians? Because a lot of Ukrainian girls were coming. Some yeah. Russians once in a while. Yep. Um, I probably have to say Czech Republic. Czech. Yeah. Why? I don't know. It was just like. Um, you like going there the most, or you like those girls the most? Out of the girls from your, well, you said in between Budapest and Ukraine girls and Czech girls. Yeah, so those like girls. I like the Czech girls. Yeah. Okay. Um, the uh, sometimes the Budapest girls can be a little cold, you know. I mean, they're still good, uh-huh. but they can be a little cold. I thought they're all cold. <laughs> Personally, you know what I mean? They're the coldest the, fucking ice. And the Ukraine girls, they just all about their money. they all about their hustle. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I mean, you know, the girls it seemed like they might have had tough upbringings. Right. Yeah, but yeah. Well, let me tell you a quick funny story about Ukraine girls, right? So I was in Budapest, and I was going to be uh, shooting some scenes in Budapest. So the agent, she was this Ukraine lady, right, from Ukraine. So she brought about five Ukraine girls to my hotel room so I can cast them and say, okay, I want to shoot her, I want to shoot her, shoot her, right? I had this huge bottle of vodka, right? And uh, they was like, hey, can we have some vodka? So I opened it up, like, yeah, here you go. I went to the bathroom. Literally, I was in the bathroom for like two or three minutes. I came out, the bottle was empty. And it was a huge bottle. Were they drunk? They wasn't even drunk. It was like water. Right? And then they was like, hey, you got any more alcohol? And I did, but it was in my suitcase. I was like, nah, I don't have any more. <laughs> After they killed that bottle off so quick, really? between the five of them <laughs> or the six of them, I was like, the hell? And they wasn't even drunk. <laughs> yeah, you know, there's one thing you got to say in your life, you know what I mean, that some people might not understand because the Bible says it pretty well, but judge you not, let you be judged right. because until you walk in their shoes, right. you don't know shit. Right. So True. They might have had to drink the, you know, pain away. You know what I mean? Right. Anyway. But yeah, so you, so you like the, the Czech girls better than the Budapest or the, all right. I, I thought they all had um, value. Right. You know what I mean? Some were prettier, some weren't, but they all seem equal, you know, here or there. But it did seem like they're a little taller in Czech. Yeah. Than Hungary. Yeah. But oh, I liked them all. You know what I mean? All because they did such good work for me. So God bless you, girls. Thank you. <laughs> you know? So you would you say that Czech had the most professional girls working? Yeah. 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 So all right. But the um the Ukraine girls mm-hmm. were all super beautiful, like. They're some of the most beautiful girls I've ever seen. I had to think that the U- Ukraine girls might have been prettier too. Right. But I did see some pretty Czech girls. Yeah. But maybe by fun. an edge, right? Right. Yeah. Yeah. They, you know, we did a lot of cool stuff. I mean, remember Little White Slave Girls? Right. <laughs> well, there was, there was times in, in Europe where I'm thinking in my head like, I can't believe I'm having sex with this girl. This girl is so beautiful. She's yeah. like she should be in a magazine somewhere, a model. In Vogue. Right. That's how pretty the girls were. Right. I mean, it's easy for them to be in Vogue, right? Yeah. But some didn't make it to Vogue, or or maybe they did. We don't even know. You know what I mean? Right. Or whatever. You know, European. They're, yeah, they're tall, 5'8", five, 5'10", five, right. all day long with, bot, with tits. They always had better tits than asses. Yeah. You know, but, you know, pretty girls. So, do you prefer having sex with two girls or one girl? Is it more complicated with two, more work, or you like two girls? No, I like one, because that way I can, like, focus my attention, you know, not have to share, you know. Yeah, there's a girl who I I jacked off to, like, a thousand times. You did the scene for me in the Hotland Pussy 6 or something. Alexis Amore. Oh, yeah. 
you know, I did a scene with her one time, and I didn't do a good job because I was fucking, who <laughs> too knows, <excited. laughs> maybe too excited. And I hadn't been, I've been producing my own stuff, so I kind of was out of the flow a little bit. I mean, I did the scene, never really went down, but it, it was, I was struggling a little bit. You couldn't see it, but um, you know, no, nobody could really see. But um, right. you know, maybe a little bit. But she was fucking made me crazy. How? how what do you think of her? <laughs> She was great. She was nice. She was something about her, I thought. Yeah. But you did a scene with me, a scene for her, and I love that scene. Right. Because I kept looking at her fat pussy. <laughs> <laughs> Anyways. So you like one girl more than two girls. Yeah. Do you like doing DPs with girls? Nah. No? Nah. <laughs> <laughs> what male co-stars did you hang out with, and which one did you not like? Um... Uh, it, it's funny. Uh, sometimes I used to uh, hang out with Brian Pomper. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I don't know Julian St. Jacques. Sometimes Mr. Marcus, uh, John John. Um, there wasn't like really me, many people that I didn't get along with. You know what I mean? Um, I'm trying to think if there was somebody that I really didn't uh, get along with or or I can't really think of anybody. I think I remember one time you said Jake said something to you or something. Well, you know, that's the whole thing, though. It's like um, I've always had uh, respect for Jake. You know, I think he's mm. a good actor, good director, good producer. I think um, he's very intelligent. Uh, I think the movies that he was putting out, like Freak Holes and Flows, like to me, I thought that was ahead of his time. You know, it was very futuristic. Mm -hmm. And a lot of people love those movies, you know mm -hmm. what I mean? Yeah. Um, I think we got into a little issue because there was a girl that he was dating. But I didn't know he was dating her. Who? Right? Uh, black girl, I can't remember her name. Dark skin, almost brown, brown dark. Skin, yeah. Big butt. Yeah. Yeah, I don't know. So what happened was, I didn't know he's he was dating her. So someone hired me to do a scene with her. But... I couldn't do the scene. Macy. Yeah. So, but I couldn't do the scene. So they asked me if I knew somebody else. So I was like, yeah, here's Wesley Pipe's number. And Wesley did the scene. And then Jake and Wesley ended up getting into it. But who knew? We didn't know that was his girlfriend. Mm -hmm. no, I don't know. no, but I think Jake was, was kicking it with, hanging out with Wesley a little bit. They were doing the yeah, rap thing. You yeah. know what I mean? But I was at that fight. Right. You know, because, you know, I backed up Jake going down a, Comp, the Watts. We went down in the Watts, and um, you know, you know, Jake didn't look, you know, that dangerous, but he had skills and he was mean. Right. He wanted to fuck somebody up, but he would be very quiet, right. <laughs> waiting for you, to, you know, to get out of line. Right. And then he liked to fuck you up. Well, we did a lot of street fighting out there in the streets, me and him. You know, I did most of the fighting, but you know, he'd fuck somebody up here and there. <laughs> <laughs> but anyways, um, tell me about. The Max Black fight, you know, <laughs> because I wasn't there, you know. Right. You know, oh. and it was it was unfortunate because Max was young and coming up, and it was right. you know he was good for the people liked him, and he was good. I liked him, you know what I mean? Well, no, I I liked him too, you know what I mean? I was trying to uh, help him, and you know, like try to like cope, like um, be kind of like a mentor to him, like okay, you do this this way, you know, and, and try to uh, you know, make it. Uh, easier for him to be able to work and do scenes and be comfortable in front of the camera, you know? And, Which is uh, what we really tried hard to do with evasive angles. Right. Because, you know, me being a professional performer, no one, the only way you get something good out of anybody is to make him relaxed. Right, exactly. And so um, there's like different angles to that story, you know? Uh, so we were shooting uh, an orgy, and uh, we were shooting an orgy, and uh, there's you know a lot of girls, a lot of guys. It was a uh, interracial orgy, you know. Um, I'm trying to do you remember what the name of that was? I forgot. Well, it had to be Next Level or something, right? Uh, or was it um, Big Fat Black Ass Orgy or something? I can't remember the word. Maybe. Which like they was? all had big asses, right? And then we were putting oil on them. Made the big black wet ass orgy. No, but it was like white girls. Oh, um, wow. okay. Yeah. 
But I, I can't remember. But anyway, so we were starting to see, and uh, and uh, Darren was there that day. He was like, like the assistant director, right? So you know, we were starting to see, and uh, and you know, everybody's doing different things, right? And then Max, he's just sitting there. He's not doing nothing. He's just sitting there like he's angry. So I was like, Hey, Max, are you gonna do anything? And uh, and he was like, uh, You gonna make me? I was like, listen, if you if you don't want, huh? if you don't want to work, you can just go home. And he's like, you gonna make me, <laughs> right? I was like, oh okay, let's let's go out front, right? Because we was in the backyard. Let, let's go out front. And then when we walked out front, he went outside, and then I closed the door and locked it, right? <laughs> then he ran around the house and uh, came in the back door, and I was walking back, and then he swung at me, but I ducked and he missed, and then I grabbed him, and then Darren grabbed him too, but I told Darren to let him go, you know. So later on, I found out why he was so upset that day, because he was dating one of the girls that was on set. Marquetta? No, it was a no. different Spanish chick, right? I can't remember her name though. Huh. And but LT was sitting next to that chick that Max was the the girl that Max was dating, but nobody knew that they were dating. And so he was upset with LT because LT was you know. With his with his girl, but he should have known she was gonna be in the orgy. So that's why he was upset, huh. right? And um, Darren really wanted to fight him. Really? Right. So that's why I kind of stepped up because I didn't want Darren to fight him. I don't think. I mean, well, <laughs> I don't know with Darren's skills, but Max had a good punch, so you know, might not have worked out. So you know what I mean? So right. you never know. In a fight, you know what I mean? Right. But um, usually, you know, if you can land a clean punch, it does the job. Right. <laughs> yeah. Right. But um, all right. Well, that's that story. <laughs> <laughs> and so um, I remember after that, not not far after that, I dragged you down to John Jock Machado for jujitsu. Right. Right. <laughs> right. And um. You picked it up pretty good, pretty quick, right? Yeah. You liked it? Yeah, I liked it. How long did you do it for? I think I did it for like two or three years. Two or three years? Yeah. You were getting good? Yeah. You like the rear, <laughs> you liked the rear naked choke, didn't you? <laughs> yeah. That's the best one anyways. <laughs> right. <laughs> so you can, you're sneaking up people pretty good? Yep. And John Jock said you were doing good. Yeah. He said that to me. <laughs> right. So yeah, you, hey, and I definitely appreciate you introducing me to the Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu and John Jock. You know what I mean? It, I really, uh, like, you know, I liked it. Like, I really was getting into it, you know? <laughs> yeah, you could have kept going. But what, why'd you stop? Um, at one point, I had hurt my back. and um, In, in jiu-jitsu? Yeah. You know, you get injured. <laughs> yeah. It's a young man's sport. Right. Because you get so, injured. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, so that's that's kind of why you stopped? Yeah. And then once you stop, well, I just kind of, you know, because my back was hurt, so I just kind of stopped, and I was thinking, like, you know, maybe I'll go back. But then once you stop. <laughs> <laughs> you don't want to go back there. <laughs> yeah, that kind of. You find all kinds of excuses not to go back. <laughs> oh, I got to travel to Brazil. I don't got time to go. <laughs> yeah, right? Because it takes another two or three months to get your body worked back into getting right. beat up. <laughs> right, because I did a lot of years, you know what I mean? And I didn't get my black belt, but, I, you know, pissed me off. I didn't get my black belt. But I was going through all kinds of, you know, right. bullshit. Well, the, the, um. The other thing too about uh, Brazilian Jiu Jitsu is that um, you hurt all kind of muscles that you didn't even know that you had. <laughs> yeah. It's not a joke. <laughs> right? But it's very magical. Right. It works beautifully, right? right. <laughs> <laughs> did you try it on some friends? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you did? Get their neck, their back, you mean? Yeah. Yeah, that's your favorite move. You really yeah. weren't doing arm bar. You just wanted their, ne their neck. That's yeah. the best one too. Yeah, that was the right. That's the right move to you know to go for. Right. You know all of them, but to get somebody in that position to the neck, right. so you can get their neck good. That's actually an art in itself. You know what I mean? But if you did, you practice that all the time. Yeah. So you said, "Fuck it, I just want to get that one." Yeah. Yeah. Well, yeah. That's a great. Um, the other one that I liked was the um, can't remember the name, but like you grab their wrist and you kind of and then your other arm or something and then you kind of bend it their arm while they're on their back oh kimura yeah come on but that's dangerous yeah that's dangerous because this one time i did it you know 
at, at the studio. I did it to this one guy. And I, I, I didn't put any pressure, right? I was just holding it because I was thinking he's just going to, you know, tap out, right? He tried to pull his arm out. It bent so far back. I thought I broke his arm. On set? On, uh, oh, in school. In, in the jujitsu, huh. in, the, in the class. I thought I broke it. He screamed so loud. Uh-huh. <laughs> yeah, right. All this stuff's dangerous. You get fucked up. <laughs> right. <laughs> I don't I never saw him in class after that. <laughs> <laughs> that, said, that happens. <laughs> you hurt your pride. That's why you guys just take your beating and shut the fuck up. Right. Right? Pretty much, don't you think? Yeah. Take it get ready to get beat up and just, you know, practice, practice, you get better. But um you were well, you were on the set you were on the set when I grabbed Pumper when he yeah. when I <laughs> Tor- tortured him. Yeah. He got me a little guilty for a second. <laughs> then he ran as his arms got tired. Right. <laughs> I chased him and tortured him. Right. Made him say uncle. Right. Whatever I said. <laughs> In front of everybody. <laughs> right. Anyway, it wasn't very nice. But he benched 500 pounds, right? I weighed about 150. Right. He weighed about 220, right? Yep. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, so um, I remember <clears throat> that you told me <laughs> you were in TJ one time. And you stab somebody. <laughs> <laughs> uh, well, it was, it was it was it was with the uh, ink pen. Uh, so now he had lead poison <laughs> or pen poison. Well, I, I, I stabbed him in the eye with the ink pen. <laughs> <laughs> see, see, Mars quiet, but you, you gotta be careful. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, I tried to de-escalate the situation, but he kept coming for it. So he I was just, like, hey, listen, man, you know, just let it go, like, whatever. And then he kept coming for it, so I was like... You really got his eye? He Fuck. was, like, it was, I felt bad. Oh, that's bad, man. he was bleeding, so it looked like he was crying blood. So right in the eye or the side of it? Like, right there. So maybe you didn't blind him? No. Nah. You don't think so? No. Nah. It wasn't in the people. It was in the white part, though, but kind of like in the corner. But I he, feel bad, though. Yeah, well, you were just so pissed off. You got <laughs> no. I was trying to get him to like let it go. You know, like you're not much of a striker, right? You're more like to wrestle, right? Yeah. I mean, you, I, I had you punch the pads. You're not really a super striker. It's not your thing, no, right? No. You feel uncomfortable with striking, punching yeah. a little bit? Yeah. Because I've, I've hurt my hands before. Oh. Yeah. It felt like he instead of me punching him. Felt like he punched me in my hand. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> he had a hard head. <laughs> yeah, I got it. Yeah. Let's see. One time, at least one time, we were on the set in Brazil, right? I think I was I was not on the set this time, but the federal the Brazilian federal police came. Right. Once or twice. Uh, twice. Twice. So what happened the most dramatic time? So. Uh, um, we were on on a set on location. Was was that in Sacarama? I thought I had. No, nah, it wasn't. Wasn't no. in Sac- Yeah, they didn't show up in Sacarama. Okay. Um, but we were uh we were in Rio and we were at a, like a love motel, but it was like a really nice big one, and uh, uh, we were gonna shoot some scenes, but Paulo had brought you know the agent. He had brought some girls for us to do casting. Like, okay, do you want to shoot this girl? Do you want to shoot? This? So he brought like four or five girls. So out of uh, the five girls, I was like, there's four girls that I can shoot, but this other girl, I can't, you know, she doesn't fit into, she, you know, she was skinny. She didn't fit into any of the, the movies that we were casting for. So Paul was like, okay, well, I'm going to take her home and drop her off. Well, on the way to take her home, they got pulled over by the police. And so the police pulls them out of the car. And they asked the girl, so what's going on here? And she was like, she was upset because I didn't choose her to do the video, right? So she tells them, oh, these Americans are shooting porn at this hotel up there. And then they make Paulo drive them back to the hotel. And it's like five cops, and they come in the room with their M16s out. And I guess the leader of the group, he was a black Brazilian guy. He was like super tall, super big. I was like, "Oh shit!" So when when they came in, they uh they told us to sit down, right? So I sat down, and I'm just trying to blend in, like, "Hey, I'm just here with everybody else, right?" And then he looks around the room, and then he points at me. He's like, "You come over here." 
looking like, why do you pick me out of <laughs> like everybody here? Why does he pick me? <laughs> so he was like, where's your bags at? I was like, oh, my bags right here. So he looked through my bag, and then um, and then I I look at Paulo. I was like, hey, Paulo, listen, man, tell him that uh, you know, we respect him, we respect his job, we respect Brazil. That um, I want to uh, buy. By by him and his uh, other guys lunch, and then he tells them, and then uh, then he asked Paulo how much, and I was like uh, three hundred reais, right, and which is like a hundred and fifty dollars, right, and then he's like uh, no five hundred, and I was like no, nah, all I got is three, so he's like come in, he told me and Paulo to come in the other room, and gave him three hundred, and they left. <laughs> well. That's that how you crazy. do it. That's how you do it, South America. <laughs> right. It's not the first time. Believe me, right. I got two or three times. Colombia, Venezuela. Yeah, I got I got hit up in Colombia yeah. before too because we were shoot the I was shooting for the little Jenny, right? Mm -hmm. And you wanted me to have her like she was shoplifting, and then the cop catches her shoplifting, and then she they go back to the room and she has sex with the cop, right? It was difficult to get a real cop's uniform. Like they wasn't supposed to sell it to me, but you pay a little bit extra money, and they sold it to me. But I told the actor, "Do not wear this uniform outside. Do not wear this uniform outside. Put it in your bag, and when you get to the store, then put it on. And then when you finish that scene, take it off, put it back in the bag, and then come back." He didn't do it, and the police saw him, and because they had had an issue with uh, somebody impersonating a cop and then robbing people, so they was like on it. <laughs> Which is uh, happens all the time in Brazil, right? But this is Colombia. Yeah. What in um, where in uh, Cali, in Bogota. Bogota, Bogota. Yeah. Huh. <clears throat> yeah. So you paid him some money. <laughs> yeah, it was uh, it was close to uh, Christmas, right? Mm -hmm. And so you know, I I told. Um, Christian, I was like, hey, tell them, like, you know, I I respect their work, I respect their job, you know, I think Brazil, I mean, Colombia is a beautiful country, um, you know, it's kind of close to Christmas, uh, I want to uh, buy some Christmas gifts for uh, you and your family, so I gave them, like, $250. Oh, well, that's the way, no big deal, as long as you don't go to jail. Right, <laughs> right. I think Jacob said one time that you said... The TT could cast, shoot, perform, do air, produce, and do all the shit by himself. Right. And do a, like something like that, right? Yeah. Like I could do so much work by myself. Yeah, like you, like you would do camera work. You would do a scene. You would cast the girls. You would get the location. Like it took three of us to do the same job that you were doing. <laughs> that's what he, that's what you said, right? Yeah. 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 People don't know that I used to work pretty hard, huh? Right. Well, um. One time when I was working for you for Evasive Angles, so I kind of started getting uh, frust frustrated, right? Because I was like, man, why does uh, TT keep giving me all these hard projects to do? Like, why why I got to do all this hard stuff, right? Like, you know, like put together a, a Oriental Orgy World where there's not that many Asian girls in the business. And so uh, Jacob told me um, that the reason that you gave me the hard stuff to do because you knew that if I couldn't do it, that it couldn't be done. That I wasn't gonna give up easy, you know what I mean? That I was gonna try to, my hardest to do it. And then if I couldn't do it, then it probably couldn't be done. Well, Jacob couldn't do it. Right. <laughs> right, right. <laughs> yeah, I mean. Right. I mean, I helped, I helped, especially with the Oriental Origin World, we'd try to align, we know when the girls were there, we right. could put it together. Right. But it was hard, that was the hardest one to get the talent. Right. Uh, together at one show because there's not that many Asian girls around. No. So those are like almost impossible to make. I mean, right. even brown and rounds. Good luck trying to make brown and round now, right? <laughs> right. You think they it could be done? Nah. It'd be hard and it doesn't have the flavor that we brought to it. I mean, those those movies, Brown and Round, Brazilian Orgy, even my mothers and daughters were pretty nice, right? But yeah. people copied the fuck out of those. They couldn't copy the orgies very well. No. But um those things will never be done again the right way ever. Right. I don't think. Do you think? Do you agree? Uh, it's impossible, yeah, right? Yeah. The the love and you know the style because I brought a lot of style to it. A lot right. of a lot of um, 
care, you know, a lot of respect I try to bring to the shoot, to the ideas, you know what I mean? But you helped me all over the world, so, you know, right. I considered you a big part of evasive angles. Definitely. You know? <clears throat> I remember you brought me, I think the first girl, like you, like we said earlier, the first girl you brought me was, you know, India and right. for Black Street 11. Then you brought me that little girl for, not little, she was old, you know what I mean? But she was really small, right? Right, like four foot seven or something, four foot eight. Oh, Remember she yeah, had a light-skinned yeah, boyfriend? Yeah, 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 yeah. Right? She was <laughs> right. a cool chick. She was yeah. pretty too. Yeah. Yeah, she was mixed with, I don't know, some Asian or something, but, you know, she had a yeah. really interesting look, right? right? I became friends with her, you know what I mean? Right. I used to fuck her, you know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> but she was super sweet. She was super yeah. nice. But, you know, you brought me that. You started bringing me girls here and there. That's how our relationship formed. Right. That's right when I started. So, you know, you got to see me just shooting a couple scenes here and there into making... One of the biggest companies around, right? Yep, definitely. And you were saying earlier that Bang Brothers used to have a file of all my oh, movies yeah. to copy my stuff. Yep. Because, you know, they wanted to imitate my company. Right. Right? Because they yep. didn't know what the fuck they were doing right. starting out. And then they, you know, and then they, you know, you know, took a, a traitor. You know what I mean? <laughs> right. Yeah. People will betray you in your life. Even Donald Trump said it. He says, I was listening to the, the Donald Trump, you know, on Netflix story, right? right? Four-part series. He goes, yeah. He says truth a lot. You know, he goes, yeah. he says, people, I, mean, I like Donald Trump, so I don't give a fuck what anybody says. I'm for Trump. Right. Sure the fuck ain't for Biden. He's the devil. So, <laughs> you know what I mean? So, um, he said, people, well, he said, they're vicious. It seems like they'll fuck you anytime they can fuck you. You know, right. I was like, yep. Anyway, so um, what awards did you win? Um, uh, like the 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 uh, next level award you were won number seven. Yeah, it won an award. There was a couple of other ones, but the one that I really liked was um, was it? I think it was Mothers and Daughters. Yeah, we got it the most, most downloaded. downloaded Video. No, no, no! I fucked you and your mama. Yeah, number one got the most uh, was the most downloaded video for that year. <laughs> yep. And what people don't know is, you know that that evasive or I came up with that idea, right? Right. That this idea wasn't around. No. Nobody did mothers and daughters. Right. I invented mothers and daughters. Right. And, and then uh, everybody started copying. <laughs> yeah, and everybody started copying, and, and the other stuff fucked your. Stepdaughter, right. I did all, I made all that shit. Right. But, anyways, so, but yeah, it was. Um, I thought it was great stuff, right? Right. It, it was, was great porno. Yeah. You know, <laughs> kinky. Right. You know, we had Brazilian orgy it was fun. Right. Brown around was fun. Yeah. It really wasn't so kinky. It was just. It wasn't even so. It was sexual, but not really. It was just like a fun. Yeah, like I a party. Like a party, right? Yeah. We made it fun, happy. Yep. The um, we would interview the girls after, right? And then the guys talking about which guy was better, which girl was better, remember? Right. So it just it was a big, fun, happy situation. Right. You know what I mean? But the um, mother's and daughters was kinky. <laughs> right? <laughs> right. And the other stuff was kinky, you know. Yeah. But we had a big variety of kinky stuff, of fun and kinky stuff. Right. So um, you won awards there. Did you win any awards with any other companies? Any um, best sex scenes, anything like that yourself? Or just an uh, orgy? I think uh, for a gangbang scene, and then for, uh, I think it was a DP scene, but mm -hmm. it was for a different company, though. Mm -hmm. um, I so can't you, remember. So you name. won a few awards here and there. Yeah, yeah. That's cool. Would you? Do you like the Avian Awards? Yeah. Do you get a lot of pussy on the Avian Awards? Yeah. Tell people. <laughs> tell, come on. Tell everybody. Give a good, good, give a good example. Man, it's, it's crazy. Uh, one time... Um, Went to the Avian Wars show in Las Vegas. And it's usually towards the end of January. Man, I didn't sleep for four days. <laughs> really? A lot it of was, pussy? It was, yeah, left and right. <laughs> really? Right. It's beautiful, huh? Right. <laughs> well, I used to have the girls signing, remember? Right. And they, they were nice. <laughs> but um, so you had a lot of action. So right. it, oh, uh, many, many times, just. People want to hang out, party, fuck. Right. Yeah. It's just beautiful. Like, you can't really 
I mean, you know, the porno experience, you know, at a high level, when you get to the higher level, you know, right. is, I don't know, maybe the, one of the best experiences you can have in your whole life. Or the, or the most. You miss the old times? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I mean, I, I, I appreciate it. You know, I had a lot of fun, so I don't have any uh, regrets. But, um, yeah, I, I do kind of miss it. <laughs> what do you think about the Avian Awards in itself, the awards show? Any, any um, comments? No. No? It's okay. It's, it's cool. Whatever. Yeah. What show did you like the best? X, SARS, XRCO, AVN, Fox. Well, you weren't around for Fox, I don't think. No. Uh, Avian. Avian? Yeah. We were at the XRCO once or twice together. Yeah. What did you like most about the business? <sighs> the, the traveling. Yeah? Yeah. It's in your blood? Yeah. We went in a lot of places. Right. <laughs> Philippines. Right. Thailand. Colombia. Brazil. Right. Well, this is the thing I think a lot of people don't know about uh about you and us i mean about us that when you travel we had to find the girls on our own there was no agency there was no uh modeling agency we had to go out and recruit the girls and get the girls ourselves <laughs> mm -hmm. yeah sometimes i would stay up till six in the morning talking to a girl in a nightclub hey 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 <laughs> you know right and people say oh yeah tt you never did any work <laughs> try to be in Colombia when they're still killing people <laughs> so no I, I had other um, uh, directors or other people that owned other companies they're like hey who's the agent you use in the Philippines I'm like what there's no agency <laughs> you gotta go find those girls yourself yep. it's a lot of work and you gotta have the balls right be careful which, place, which neighborhood you go to too <laughs> right you could be dead <laughs> right anyways so um Do you think the new generation of porn stars are as good as the old generation? No. Nah. No way? It seems like a lot of the, the new scenes, they seem very mechanical. You know what I mean? Like, mm -hmm. like the girls and the guys don't really seem like they're enjoying it. Like they're just there going through the motions, you know? Mm -hmm. So I don't know if it's like how the people, the new directors are directing them. Maybe that's how they want them to act. Or if it's just like, I don't know, it just seems off, you know? It seems boring. So you still watching porno? Yeah, but uh, I like to watch amateur porn, though. Hmm. Yeah, More re like, more realistic? Like the, like the super amateur porn where like it's real dark in the room and you can barely, you got to squint to try to make out what they're doing. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's pretty bad. <laughs> but it's more, it's more real. It's more realistic, you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, I mean, well, you know, you have to be jaded by now, don't you think? <laughs> From, I mean, you know, it's a lot of wear and tear and right. a lot of experiences. You right. know what I mean? Things yeah. become different. Right. You know? How did you get your stage name? Um, well, my uh, real name is, my real first name is Anthony. And um, my uh, middle name uh, starts with the M, but I didn't like my middle name. So I would tell everybody my middle name was Mark. So then when I started doing the movies, I was like, okay, Mark Anthony. Yeah. That was pretty easy. Right. <laughs> <laughs> Just came to you right away, no big deal? Yeah. Well, I mean, I wanted to, you know, use part of my real name in my name. So I just used my first name as my last name for the, That's for cool. the uh, stage. Name. <laughs> Did you fuck any celebrities? Um, Just... uh. The one chick that uh, that uh, was on Family Family Matters, I think. When she was younger, she was on Family Matters, and then she did a couple of porn scenes. Yeah, I should have jumped on that one. I didn't jump on it. But yeah. I just can't remember her name. You remember her name? Um, Jamie Foxworthy. Oh, really? Yeah. Uh, the AJ brought that one, huh? No, Robin. Robin? Yeah. Oh, yeah? <laughs> you got Robin, didn't you? Yeah. Yeah, Robin was a great find. Right. She was cool. She was gangster. Right. <laughs> she was pretty tough. I wrestled her one time. Really? I like. I no, I think I. I don't know, yeah, I mean, I let her get in a position. I just want to see. I was right. like, "Fuck! If somebody doesn't know what they're doing, she's gonna fuck them up." <laughs> right. So yeah, when I um, when like she would uh bring me the girls, and then I would bring the girls to you or to yeah. 
you know, whoever, you know, to get them work so I can get work too. And then um, one day I was going to, um, I was going to be going to Japan, right? So I was like, hey, you're going to have to meet these people <laughs> too. I'm going to introduce you to them. So you're going to have to start talking to them on your own. And she was like kind of shy, but then you, I, you was the first one I uh, introduced her to. Mm-hmm. She was like, oh, TK's cool. <laughs> yeah, she was cool. Yeah. I mean, I remember when the first girl was Lacey DeVoe, right? Nah, that was Rob. That was Rob's? Oh, okay. Yeah. She, but she had some nice girls over the time. Yeah. yeah. Oh, no, here she is. Yeah. No, I remember. I remember because you had your apartment on Reseda Boulevard. Right, right. right. <laughs> near Sadako or something like that, right? Uh, that was, yeah, yeah, near Sadako, yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, we shot there a couple times, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah, it was just the early days. I mean, we were did a lot of stuff together, right. more than anybody else, right? Yeah, I remember. Um, one time I had found this uh, couple, right, a black couple, like you know, and they uh, wanted to do the video together, right? And then I, we were going to shoot at my apartment, so I brought them there, and then we was waiting on you, right? And then when you came in, the uh, the guy he started like getting all nervous and stuff, right? And then he's like, "Hey man, can I talk to you outside?" I was like, "Yeah, what's going on?" He's like, "Man, is that TT boy?" Is that TT boy? I was like, what's going on? Man, man, I don't think I can do the scene. I was like, man, you wasting our time. He's like, uh, let me talk to her. Maybe you can work with her. <laughs> really? Uh, yeah. Why couldn't he do the scene? Because you was making him nervous. <laughs> he was a big fan of yours. <laughs> well, <laughs> I mean, you know, the people, I think people forget because, you know, time goes away, you know what I mean? Right. And, like before, I was a producer, a company owner. I was the top actor, one of the top actors for sure, right. doing a gang of work, right? Right. And um, anyways, but uh, there was a story. I guess Claudio told me one time that um, I walked in the door, and then the, the guy who married Francesca Lay, Mark Wood, right? Yeah. Saw me. He couldn't do a scene there. <laughs> 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 saw me walk <laughs> by. <laughs> There was a lot of stories of, of actors working next to me. That was the end of them. <laughs> Anyways, you know, that was pre-Viagra. You know, no, people couldn't cheat. So right. when you're next to me, <laughs> even Marcus, you know, right. begged, hey, please, don't, don't show off. <laughs> I like Marcus. You know? right, right. Anyways. But uh, anyways, um, did you get recognized a lot? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Did you get some um, girls recognize you and say, hey, yeah. tell me about it? <laughs> um, one time I was at a, a nightclub in Hollywood, right? And um, this uh, this light-skinned black girl, she came up to me. She's like, hey, I got a question for you. Don't take it the wrong way. I'm like, yeah, what's going on? She's like, <laughs> are you, you do porn? Are you Malcolm Anthony? I was like, yeah. She's like, I knew it. I knew it. I knew it. And uh, we ended up going home together. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so it's happened a few times? That's the way I would get uh, girl clubs on. It's like yeah. I would go to the club and then I would talk to them like, hey, you know, buy you some drinks and, you know, hey, you know, let's go and back to my place and have fun. And then the next day, I'll be like, hey, you know, I got a way you can make some money. <laughs> <laughs> but Mark, the girls liked you anyways. You didn't right. have to do much, I don't think. Uh, you didn't do much work, right? No, not really. Especially when you're younger. When we're younger, girls like us more. Right, right. Just the way it is. <laughs> but, you know, I remember the girls liked you. You know, That's why you got a, you got a lot of people to show up. Right. Because people liked you. Right. Men, men and women, you know. The right. guys want to work too, but still, it's not as easy as people think. Right. You got to be cool. They got to like you. You got to respect you. Right. All of it. Right. You know what I mean? Exactly. So a lot of people liked you. All the way around, you know, right. the girls liked you. So don't let that uh, n- don't let that be forgotten. Okay. It's a fact. Right. Do you, you remember that? Yeah. You know? Um, a lot of, like, when I was, before I was on the contract with you, you know, I was working for different companies, and uh, a lot of times they would uh, call me to work with the new girls, the girls that's doing our first scene, because they said I was able to, like, make them feel comfortable and, you know what I mean? Because, you know, girls, they can get nervous, too. And, you know, if they're not used to having sex in front of other people, then now there's a camera there and somebody's telling you what to do, you know? So I, I took it as a compliment that they, you know, yeah, they put me with the new girl because they said I would, you know, that I was able to um, have get them to relax and open up, you know? 
That's in the early days. That was how you got a lot of work. Not you, but I'm saying actors. Right. You know what I mean? By word of mouth, the girls liking you. Right. If they don't like you, then no way you're gonna work with them. And you know, sometimes a lot of girls say, "Oh yeah, I want to work with TT." Or some girls say he's a maniac. No. Right. 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 <laughs> you know, so I would lose work. <laughs> you know, but um, not because you know, not because I was a dick, just because I like to do a good scene. Right. Anyway, <clears throat> so um. Do you remember the old... Here's some old stars I wrote down. Okay. Right? Sahara. She looked fucking beautiful, right? Right. She looked incredible. If you're watching this, Sahara, which I'm guessing you're not, <laughs> but if you are, I would love to interview you. I mean, I, I've never never worked with her, but I've met her. You yeah. know, like at the You AVN, met her? At the AVN? No. One year, yeah. No. Come, the old school Sahara? Uh, I don't know. No. We talked about the same No, one. this old school. I never okay. saw her. No. Just before my time. Okay. No, yeah. But I, I could have swore I met her in Vegas one time, but I could be wrong. Yeah, I don't think so. I think I never, I think she didn't even do that much work. Right. But maybe for a few, a two or three years, I guess. Right. And she was long gone in the 80s. Right. You know, late 80s, whatever. You know, I never seen her. But there was um, Purple Passion. You ever meet Purple Passion? Mm -mm. No. You remember I her though? I wanted to. <laughs> she was great. I loved her. We used to fuck around. Right. And um, Ebony Eyes. Oh, yeah. I never met her, but I wanted to. <laughs> I was supposed to work with her, her my first scene, uh -huh. and she canceled. She goes, uh -huh. I quit porno. Now, she didn't know. I was just a young kid, right? right? You know what I mean? Yeah. But I was supposed to work with her. It made the scene a lot easier, believe me. Right. <laughs> right? But that was her. She said, no, I quit. I don't want to do porno anymore. And that was 1989. Wow. That sucked, right? Right. It fucking sucked. <laughs> but Angel Kelly, she mm. looked incredible, yes. right? She yes. looked beautiful, right? Mm -hmm. Who would you rather? Because you remember Sahara, right? Right. Who would you rather oh. fuck, Sahara or Angel Kelly? Angel Kelly. Yeah? yeah, she seemed hot, yeah. but but Sahara looked sensual, like right. like she might melt your ass, right? right? But <laughs> Angel Kelly looked like horny and hot, right? right. What about um? Did you see the girl Mave? Mm -hmm. She was a dark skinned girl. She got, mm -hmm. she had big fat pussy. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, right, we did a three way with me and Dominique. Did a three with her at a at her um a hotel room one night. <clears throat> she did that, but uh, she got mad because I kept fucking her afterwards. <laughs> 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 but what? What? So you already said it because we you already said you love Janet Jack. I just say what black porn star, but you, Janet Jack is the one. Right. <clears throat> All right, so this one, you know, and this one, you know, is a interesting question. You know, don't be shy, right? <laughs> because a lot of people, you know. This is porno. We're not fucking preachers here. Right, you know what I mean? Right. Tell me about sex and drugs. Is it better to have sex on drugs? You know? Or <laughs> <laughs> you know, is it just a mind fuck? Um, you know, back in the day when uh, ecstasy first came out, it was awesome. <laughs> <laughs> yeah? Yeah. Yep. But it could be... It can be tricky, cause there was um one time I took an ecstasy pill, and I was like super horny, but not my dick didn't get hard. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what they put in that pill, <laughs> but I think my mind was just racing too fast, mm -hmm. you know. I never did ecstasy really, so. Right. But I thought you liked cocaine too. Sometimes you know, but like as far as with sex, because sometimes it can be hit or miss. <laughs> <laughs> you can be take it and be horny, and then your shit don't get hard. <laughs> uh, yeah. Or you can take it and be horny, and then your dick is hard all night and it won't go down. <laughs> really? Yeah. Well, I guess there's a terminology in the hood. You know what it's that? called? Uh -uh. Dick hard, pussy wet, shit. Because <laughs> <laughs> if you hear that terminology, then it's all good. Right. Right? But if you don't hear that, then <laughs> stay away. <laughs> of course, I'm not from the hood. Anyways, right. But um, yeah. So cocaine. Which one do you like the best? What other drug? You smoke weed, but you don't like weed. Nah. So, meth. You did meth too. Like once or twice, but then when I couldn't go to sleep, <laughs> yeah. I was like, uh, "This is irritating." <laughs> yeah, I never did that shit. But um, which one do you like the best? Which drug? Well, back in the day, I liked the ecstasy. Ecstasy. Okay. Um, cocaine's okay, but like. Man, I don't know. 
But which so when when they're all perfect, or when cocaine's perfect and ecstasy's perfect, which one's better for sex? Uh, ecstasy. Yeah. <laughs> That's what it's supposed to be for, right? Right. right. <laughs> I took a couple of pills and it didn't do shit for me. You know what I mean? Right. So I never did it again. Right. So this is you, you can sit, you know pass this question because okay. I've noticed that you've did some trans scenes. Right. No, I'm okay with talking about it. Okay. Um, I mean, I've always kind of been uh, attracted to uh, trans women. You know what I mean? And um, there's some really beautiful trans women. And a lot of the trans women that I had been around before I did a scene with them, like their energy is woman. You know what I mean? Like I don't get any masculine energy from them. You know what I mean? And uh, the situation that happened, how I started doing scenes with uh, with uh, trans women was because... Um, uh, this guy uh, hit me up and he wanted to go to either Brazil or uh, or Colombia. And I had stopped doing scenes at that time, right? What, what year was that? That was 2014, I think. So I was I had stopped doing Why? scenes. Why? Huh? Why? Because I had got sick. Oh, right. Yeah. So he called me and he wanted me to be the production manager. So he wanted me to put together the trip to go to Colombia so he can shoot trans, right? And so... The first trip, everything went fine. I booked the locations. I found this girl that helped me do get the trans girls that he wanted. Um, booked the hotels, you know, so I put the whole trip together. And I went down there too, right? So I went down there two weeks before they came so I could arrange everything. And so he brought two guys from Miami to do this, you know, two American guys to do the scenes. And so everything was fine on that trip, right? A couple months later, they want to go on a second trip, right? So cool, put everything together. I go down there two weeks before they come. Everything's arranged once they get there. Well, he brings two American guys again, right, from Miami. One guy goes out and parties and is useless in the scene. So he sent him back to Miami, right? Then he comes to me, it was like, hey, you know, Mark, I know you never did scenes with trans, but you know, it's, you know, my trip's kind of messed up because I only got one guy now. Is there any way you would consider doing scenes? And then I was like, uh, let me think about it. And then I was like, you know what? Yeah, I'll do it. Because you were attracted to him anyways? Yeah. Before? Yeah. So you fucked around with him before? Not really, though. No? Maybe I got hit like once or something, but like uh, my first time actually doing everything, having sex, was on camera. Well, yeah. well. So that's a pretty big step, don't you think? Yeah. Shawn, Shawn Michaels made that step right. pretty hard, right? Well, yeah. A lot harder than you made the step, right? Right. <laughs> How many scenes did you do? I think I only did like 10. Huh? Yeah. You said, I'm not interested in doing it anymore? Or? Nah. Why? I mean, I had already uh, pretty much retired by that time, you know what I mean? And then really those scenes that I did, I was pretty much more doing a favor for the, for the director, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So it wasn't like... Um, I wanted to get back in the business and um, and do more scenes. It was more like, I think that trip, and then I went on another trip with him, and then after that, I was like, ah, I'm good. That was, that was for Josh? No. Yeah. Josh. Okay. Yeah. Trans 500. <laughs> <laughs> How's he doing? Talk to him? Uh, I haven't talked to him lately. You guys are cool? Maybe still? I talked to him like a year ago. Yeah. Oh, he's pretty. He did. He was a nice guy. Yeah. Good guy. Yeah. Yeah. What's up, man? I need to get him on here. Yeah. If you if you watch this, you guys number? Um. I think I have his, I think Facebook or something. I'll send you his Facebook. I'll get him on here. Yeah. One of these days. Anyways, yeah, and Lucas, right? Lucas, uh, you talk to him at all? Yeah, but you, you know what happened with Lucas? Mm -hmm. He had a stroke, I think, mm -hmm. or something like that. Um, but, like, I, like, uh, message him on uh, Facebook, so we talk sometimes but he, on Facebook. He got healthier, though, I thought, right? Yeah, I mean, he's, he's better than he was when it first happened, but he still got some huh. issues you know so he can't talk you're saying um i haven't talked uh, to him huh? just only uh okay uh, yeah. messages well, he's a nice guy yeah they're both cool dudes yep. both good guys lucas stone josh stone right what's up <clears throat> all right so um is there any stories you know that i don't know about in porn that you might want to reveal you know something exciting happened on a set you know or yeah, on a set or something. Hmm. Um, 
I don't know. I can't really think of anything right now. Really? <laughs> yeah. Like, probably the, the craziest thing we talked about that when the um, Brazilian police showed up with their M16s. <laughs> <laughs> because it doesn't take much to go like this. And yep. no more you. Right. It's scary as fuck, right? They put right. the guns on me numerous times. Right. <laughs> All over the place. Oh, what about, what about in Bogota? Right. That shit was crazy. We were right. looking for some girls right. in the fucking back place. <laughs> they put the gun on my back and your back too, just on me, right? No, on you and on, on Clay. In my, yeah, in my fucking kidney. <laughs> right. Right. And that would have been the end. Right. Yeah, we're in a dangerous place. <laughs> That was, that was the craziest. Crazy. That was way crazier than Villa Mimosa, right? Villa Mimosa was a crazy. Tell people what Villa Mimosa looked like. The Villa Mimosa is like a, um, it's like nightclubs or strip clubs. They're all stacked on top of each other, but it's not nice strip clubs. It's like some raggedy strip clubs, <laughs> and they got women that are right on the street. Some of them are naked. But it's one street, one blocked one street, off yeah. only street. Right. In the favelas in Brazil, right. outside of Rio. Right. And how dangerous is it out there? Super dangerous. <laughs> <laughs> and those girls, how much are the girls going for? Uh, I think $10. <laughs> no. The Hey Eyes was 5 to 1. Right. So how much they're going for? Like $5? <laughs> 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 and these are some pretty girls, some sexy. Yeah. I seen some girls that I said, "Fuck, two dollars and fifty cents." Well, I don't, I don't know if you know it or not. We shot some girls from Villa Mimosa. No, I don't know. Uh, I mean, I, Natalia. Can't remember. The super pretty mm -hmm. Natalia. Mm -hmm. She was worked in. Uh, oh shit! No, oh. Villa Mimosa was crazy, but we have to say that the back street of Bogota. Was as about as crazy as a zombie apocalypse <laughs> as you ever saw, right? Because th was I tripping or not? They had drugs out on the um, yeah. fifty-five gallon drums or something like that. Yeah. All kinds of drugs everywhere. Yeah. So the police put a gun on me. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> right. Yes, that was crazy. <laughs> That's probably my craziest story. <laughs> <laughs> fires, like bonfires in the street. But drugs being sold, like, it, I didn't even, I saw some, but, you know, I wasn't buying it, but I was like, right. what the fuck is that, right? right. What they have of it? You know what they had there? Coke? Crack? What? They had every drug you can think of. <laughs> <laughs> Legally! It, well, it's, it's, later on I found out it's called the Zona La Tolerance, the Tolerance Zone. Oh, shit, really? To do testing on, on zombies or what? <laughs> well, that's the thing. That's how, um, I told you about the place because... I was walking, right? And I turned down this alley. And then I'm walking down the alley and I'm looking because it looks like a um, a farmer's market, right? But I'm looking I'm like, <laughs> what the I fuck? That's uh, marijuana that they're selling out here. <laughs> then they got Coke, then they got uh, heroin, then they got ecstasy pills. And I'm like, now, and then I'm thinking to myself, like, nobody's going to believe me. If I tell them that out in the open, they're selling drugs. <laughs> Crazy. Nobody's going to believe me. And then when I told you and Clay, you guys didn't believe me. And that's why we went down there. <laughs> <laughs> and then we got almost killed. <laughs> right. <laughs> yeah. That was, you know, that was a no joke. I knew we shouldn't have went. <laughs> <laughs> but I wanted to prove to you guys <laughs> that it's actually a, 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 a farmer's market, but they're selling uh, drugs. <laughs> that was pretty crazy. That was, that's the craziest. Villa Mosa was pretty wild, but right. that fucking place, you're dead in a second. You know, so. Right. That's it. Anyways. Um, and I found that place by accident. Really? Wow. Yeah. <laughs> what advice would you give to your fellow man on how, how to get a woman off? You know, make it better sex in the bedroom. You're a professional porn star. What advice would you give him? Uh. You have to get into their head, get into their mind, you know? So when I was doing um, porn scenes, so I was like trying different methods to try to, you know, get the girl into the scene, you know, like to try to like turn her on and make her like not be so nervous or make her more into the scene, you know? And uh, I tried a lot of different things. And uh, I found out one thing that worked for me like 90% of the time, and it was so simple. So basically, you know, most most people in porn, they don't use their real name. 
they'll use their a stage name, you know, an acting name. Um, but when you show up to work with the girl, you have to show her your ID and your test, and she has to show me her ID and her test. Now, when I look at her, her ID, I know her real name, right? So in the middle of the scene, while we're doing the scene, I whisper in her ear her real name. They come just like that. Mm-hmm. And that works 90% of the time. But there's one thing that works uh, 99% of the time. Don't let me find out she has a nickname, something that her dad used to call her when she <laughs> oh, was yeah. little. Uh-oh. 99% of the time. <laughs> <laughs> I agree. You got to get in their head. Right. I was good at it. Right. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so there's all kinds of techniques, but that's great. Thanks for telling the people that, you know. Right. So you guys try that at home. <laughs> so um, what is the secret to your success in the business? <sighs> I mean, I, 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 tr- I, I tried like, you know, a couple, cu- couple different things, you know, um, try to make myself valuable. Do you know what I mean? So that's why, you know, I would recruit girls. Like I brought a lot of girls to you, right? Yeah. And uh, so that made me more valuable, right? Like mm-hmm. I'm not sitting around waiting for you to bring me the girl. I'm bringing you some really nice girls. So of course you're going to put me in the scene. But you, you did dog me out a couple times when the girl came and she was cute. You did the scene and you gave me a finder's. <laughs> <laughs> what do you expect? <laughs> you blame me? <laughs> no. <laughs> I was upset, but I was like, hey, I don't blame him. <laughs> I would have did the same thing. <laughs> um, like make myself valuable. Uh, you know, be um, cordial. Like show up on time. You know what I mean? Try to do a good scene. Um. There was some luck involved. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Right place, right time, maybe? Right. Well, I mean, you had a long run. I don't... Yeah, maybe a teeny bit of luck, but not so much luck. Right. You know what I mean? Right. You did your job, and, you know, especially for me, you're a huge asset for my company. Thank so, you. Yeah. No, thank you. Right. So, um, can you describe in your... In two words, your journey in the business? Uh, two words. Um, uh, I can only think of one word. Awesome. <laughs> <laughs> totally awesome. <laughs> awesome. Like, I, the, my whole time in the industry, I kept pitching myself like, I can't believe they're paying me to have sex with these beautiful girls. <laughs> I would have did this for free. Matter of fact, I would have paid you guys. <laughs> You think that's the uh, difference between the generational gap now is that the people may not know how lucky they are to be able to fuck girls for money? It's possible. Yeah? It's possible. Which celebrity would you like to be stranded on an island with? Uh, Whitney Houston. Really? (laughs) Really? Is your style? Yeah. Yeah. She She had a pretty face. Body is just basic, but she had a pretty face. Right. Uh, I'll tell you my second favorite. Okay. <laughs> You're going to be shocked. Oprah. Oh, shit. Really? <laughs> <laughs> uh, I'll tell you my third favorite. Um, Whoopi Goldberg. Oh, shit. No! <laughs> really? No, are you bullshitting me? But right now. Are you bullshitting me? <laughs> no, for real. No. I think. I think. Um, I think Whoopi probably got some. I'm thinking the same thing. She probably got some good pussy. I can't agree with what she says on her show, but she right. looked like she had some good pussy. Right. I'm with you. Uh, but I'm really, right now, I'm in love with um, Lupita Nyong'o. Oh, I like to fuck her too. Right. Do you know? Do you know where she's from? Uh, I thought Nigeria or something. Um, or Kenya or no? I don't, I don't know. I know one those, one of those countries. Where? She's from Mexico. Oh yeah, but she not originally she from Mexico. No, she was born. No, but her family's from. Well, she her, speaks her, African. Yeah, no, her family's from um, uh, Nigeria. Like her mom. That's what I thought. Nigeria. Nigeria. Yeah. But her dad was a professor, yeah. and he was teaching in uh, Mexico City, and uh, she was born in uh, right. Mexico. So she's a Mexican citizen. Yeah, right, but she's. I know she speaks fluent Spanish, but you know. Right. But we know what we're saying the blood. Right. right. Her blood is Nigerian blood. Right. So um, which movie star? Would you like to put in a scene with you? Hmm. Um, Cameron Diaz. 
Really? Yeah. In her prime? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> really? Wow. Hmm. Why? I think she's hot. Yeah? Yeah. I think, she, it, I think she's freaky, too. Yeah, she look. Yeah. But she, yeah, all right. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Smash or pass? Okay. Kim K. Smash. Ivanka Trump. Smash. She's pretty. Chelsea Clinton. Ah, uh, super smash. <laughs> no way, really? Uh, Hillary Clinton too. <laughs> Not this age? Huh? At this yeah. age? <laughs> oh, that's crazy. Do you hey, still? Well, well, this is the thing. Um, I don't, I don't, um, I don't turn down much. I don't, you know, some, you know, the only thing I turn down is my collar, and sometimes I don't even do that. <laughs> uh, listen, my mom was, my mom was giving me a hard time when I was living back in Florida, so, you know, we would go to church, and then sometimes she'd like to go to the senior center, because they exercise over there, right? Uh-huh. So I would go to the senior center with her, oh, and shit. then one day, one of her friends was like, hey, when is your son, um, gonna get a uh, when is your son gonna uh, get a girlfriend and I was like how's he gonna get a girlfriend the only thing he does is go to church and go with me to the senior citizen I was like hey mom I take him from 18 to 80 <laughs> <laughs> mom, mom, oh, cracked man. <laughs> she cracked up <laughs> <laughs> well did you see did you see that I think that one actor has a tattoo of Hillary on his arm really I didn't see that I mean I don't want to say something that's false but I thought I saw where it said Pete Davidson had a tattoo of Hillary Clinton on his arm. Really? Not I was like, up. that's crazy. If that's true, then what's going on? Right. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I don't know if it's true. I'm just. Right. I'll yeah. look it up and see. Yeah. So, um, Megan the Stallion. Oh, yeah. Smash? Super Smash. <laughs> Cardi B. Super Smash. <laughs> <laughs> Taylor Swift. Super Smash. <laughs> <laughs> Which one would you like to hit of those one? The, the first. Who's first in line? Hmm. Oh man, they're all good, but I might. I'm curious about Taylor. Yeah. Yeah, Taylor Swift. I'm curious. Yeah, she's interesting. What do you think about Diddy and all the trouble he's going through, accusations and stuff like that? Right. You know, I've like years ago, like I've heard stories. You know, like what? And rumors. Uh, well, one of the stories was that when he was with um, uh, Jennifer Lopez that he would uh, pay guys to have sex with her while he watched. Really? Well, yeah. Huh. So, he's out there maybe. Well, I mean, we're out there too. <laughs> so, that, so that's yeah, it? Well, well, the thing I don't understand is, um, you know, like with the, with the cat, the whole Cassie thing. So she was with him for like 10, 11 years and, and then another. You know, Who the, was with him? Cassie, the, the, the singer that sued him. Oh, okay. Right. The sexy, he got her when she was kind of young. Yeah. Or pretty young and fresh. Right. Right. Pretty, pretty as fuck, right? Right. And they yeah. were together for like 10 or 11 years, uh-huh. right? Uh-huh. And um, And then they broke up. And then another 10 or 11 years went by. And then now she's suing them. But I'm like, she was a part of it for 10 years. Like, if you didn't like it, after one year, you should have left. Right. That's bullshit. Right. I agree with you. That's chicken shit. Yeah, that's a, that's a new world though, right? Right. And so the, on that one, yeah, that's no good. That's, right. that's garbage. So all right, what about Cat Williams calling people out? <laughs> um, I my personal opinion is uh, I think uh, he's a marketing genius. Look how much publicity he's getting, free publicity. Everybody's talking about him. So when he does some shows, they're going to be sold out. I mean, when I listen to Cat Williams do his thing. He's he gets me. I mean, I like him. You know what yeah, I mean? So no, he's like, funny. he's yeah. funny as fuck. And it, when I listen to so many people, I can't listen to him on the shows right. on Netflix or wherever. Right. I look at it and I say, I can't. It's not. It doesn't have funniness. Right. It's not that funny. When I see old Rodney Dangerfield right. on TikTok, right. I'm dead uh, because he's. <laughs> do you ever? Right. He's yeah, funny no, as fuck. Funny, yeah. Like original, right? Right. So Cat Williams seems kind of original in those eras of originality. Right. Yeah. You agree with me? Yeah. Who do you yeah. like? Who's your favorite comedian? Who you think's funny as fuck and original, not cheese? Um, I like I like Dave Chappelle. Yeah, yeah Dave's yeah. great. Yeah. Um, I like uh, Charlie Murphy. I actually think Charlie Murphy is funnier than his brother Eddie Murphy. Yeah, he's dead. I mean, he's right? passed, yeah, he passed yeah. away. But 
you know, some of the skits. Well, we we did some of those Dave yeah, Chappelle we, skits. You right? did a great job <laughs> <laughs> as Rick James. <laughs> so, uh, uh, right. <laughs> right. <laughs> the Chappelle show from a base. I'm, I'm, I'm a big fan of um, uh, Cat Williams. I, I met him before in Hollywood. Huh? Yeah, he was, he was he was nice. He was cordial. I, I don't know if he knew who you know knew that I was a porn actor, but he was he was cool. Yeah, yeah. I heard he's really really good guy. Because yeah. he was um, my girl and and his and her brother and sisters used to go hang out at his house in Woodland Hills. Oh, okay. Way back, you know what I mean? Right. Like he was always a cool dude. Right. So you know, God bless him. So I think uh, anything else you want to say on our way out of here? Um. No, I just want to say, like, uh, you know, I appreciate our time working together and having fun together. Um, uh, like, when we first started working together, right, like, a couple of people would come up to me and, like, Joey Severo and other guys, like, hey, um, uh, TT Boy had really good things to say about you. I was like, really? It's like, yeah. He said that, um, you know, you're a hard worker, you're not a punk, you're not scared to work, you know. I was like, oh, okay. Cool. <laughs> I, took, I mean, because I, I, you know, I was a fan of yours before I started, so I took that as a big compliment. You know what I mean? Well, we were in Col- we were in Colombia, right? I remember the right. one time we were in Colombia, and you know, you you know me, I'm a, I don't get tired, right? Right. <laughs> <laughs> and um, <laughs> and I'm not on drugs. Right. You know? <laughs> and um, we work until about six in the morning or seven in the morning, right? Shooting right. the scenes. Right. Right. I think you did three scenes that night, right? Right. <laughs> and I was shooting whatever I was doing, you right. know, working. How the fuck I'm working? <laughs> and I said, yeah, Mari ain't no pussy. He can hang. Right. So. I was tired, though. <laughs> <laughs> you remember that time, huh? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, man. So, I mean, you know, it's kind of a little bit, it's not sad, but you kind of, you know, you kind of miss those times a little bit, right? right. Yeah. That they're gone, long right. gone. Right. And that's it. You know, they're not coming back, right? right. And now we're older. Right. But we had a beautiful, I had a beautiful run, you know right. what I mean? Yeah. You were part of the run, you know what right. I mean? So yeah. I appreciate it. All right. It was nice definitely. to see you, Mark. I definitely appreciate it, too. Good to see you, too. Nice to see you, and um, I wish only the best for you. Definitely. You know, and, and great health, of course. All right. You know what I mean? Appreciate Maybe we'll hit Brazil again. Right. <laughs> <laughs> Peace out, TT Boy TV. We love you. Evasiveangles.com. Later days. And better lays. <laughs>